Folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I'm Christine Lisi. After 13 NFL seasons, all spent with the Eagles, who drafted him in the sixth round in 2011. Star center Jason Kelsey announced his retirement. One of the greatest centers of his generation leaves with one Super Bowl championship, six All-Pro nods in a Hall of Fame-worthy career. ESPN NFL analyst Dan Orlovsky. I don't know if there's been, at least in my time, a better athlete to be paired with the city outside of Jason. <laughs> you know, I, I, Allen Iverson comes to mind, obviously in the city of Philadelphia, what he stands for and kind of represents and what that city stands for and represents and hearing his words, perfect for each other. So much for Mike Evans testing the free agent market. The five-time Pro Bowl receiver agreed to a two-year, $52 million extension with the Buccaneers, reports ESPN's Adam Schefter, includes $35 million guaranteed. Chiefs officially placed the non-exclusive franchise tag on cornerback Legereus Sneed. They're open to trading him for the right price. Phillies agreed to a three-year, $126 million extension with ace Zach Wheeler. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Cannon, coming up Tuesday. It's franchise tag deadline day. I'll tell you which players end up getting the tag and which players end up on new teams. It's on Sportsman like 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Muso. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. What a weekend for all things purple and gold. Uh, how about the Lady Cajun softball team upsetting Oklahoma, ending a 71-game winning streak? Massive, massive weekend for Brian Thomas over at the Combine. We got Chris Trapasso, David DeLucci, Wilson Alexander, LSU starts spring football tomorrow, Matthew Bruni in 15 minutes. My God, we got a ton to do. Let's not waste any more time. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. Let's start with LSU running rough shot in Houston. Four games uh, starting Wednesday against Rice through the weekend. Very nice bill, I would imagine, at the four seasons when you're there for a week with an entire baseball team. But it was worth it. LSU goes on the road. They beat Rice. They sweep through the weekend. And this is precisely why I love going away from home early in the season. I'm not telling you something that's like a, a rare or unique thought. A lot of you feel the same way and understand it, but this is why I love packing up and getting away. Think about going, think about what you had to deal with on Wednesday at Rice, the cold, the wind, those low lights, the trouble everybody had with catching balls in the outfield. Friday, 20,000 fans at Minute Maid against Texas felt like a regional atmosphere. Go into Saturday, just 
having to feel the ninth inning against ULL the way that they did with you, know, you give up the home run and, you, and the tying run comes to the place. You have to face that adversity. That is going to be so much more beneficial than blowing out Stony Brook 18 to 4, what 18 to 3, whatever the score doesn't even matter what the score was. Go experience all that now because it's all coming when conference play starts, and that's right around the bend. Here was Jay Johnson on what this weekend meant for his team. That was great. Yeah, that was a good step forward. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, no matter how it went, we have a long way to go in terms of being as good as we want to be. But I think uh, they identified, or we identified, some things that we need to do well. And if we do them well, then we'll be really, really successful. And I don't think it's anything new. I just think they should build a lot of confidence in being able to do those things. And I thought the mindset was great. Um, you know, I hope to coach for a long time, but I'll, I'll remember this week for a long time. This was a great weekend. LSU uh, beats Texas 6-3, to three, UL Lafayette 5-4, to four, and then Texas State 10-5. to five. We'll go through a couple of takeaways. I'm not going to give you a big, long, winding game-by-game -game recap of the entire thing. If you want that, check out Musso at the Box uh, on YouTube or podcast. I'll give you just a, a handful of big-picture takeaways I had. Number one... Uh, is starting pitching, and I think that's where everyone's going to start. Coming into this season, we talked about the fact that this was going to be an inverse of a year ago where you knew with that lineup they were going to hit and score and they'd figure out the pitching, and ultimately they did. This was an inverse. You knew they had a ton of arms, but they had to replace set their top seven guys in their lineup from a year ago, so while they figured that out, they'd have to pitch it really well. I'd imagine this is what Jay Johnson envisioned. Lou Coleman. Five and two-thirds, three hits, no runs, 12 strikeouts, and just one walk. Uh, the decision to move Holman into the Friday night role is one that I think a lot of people anticipated. I know when Doug Thompson was here with us last Thursday, um, it felt like the, the conversation there was throwing Gage Jump on Friday. They went with Holman, and clearly Holman rewarded that confidence for Jay Johnson. Uh, Gage Jump. It looks a lot different than Holman. It explodes out of his hand. He'll throw mid-90s, and he was impressive, man. Five innings pitched, no runs, one hit, five strikeouts, no walks, and then you come back on Sunday with Thatcher Hurd, who you know took the ball in the biggest game of the season for you last year in Omaha to win a national championship, and all he did was give you five innings, three runs on seven hits, five strikeouts, and a walk, and honestly... If you go back and look at that fifth inning for Thatcher Hurd where Texas State broke through and got those three runs, it was a little deceiving. Uh, yes, he gave up a hit, got two quick outs, and then had two strike counts on back-to-back -back hitters where he gave up base hits to allow a run to score. And then he got a ground ball to Braswell at short, and Braswell threw the ball away and allowed two more runs to score. Should have gotten out of that inning allowing just one run. Instead, two more runs came home. But all things considered, you got three really good, if not dominant, starts out of your three starters over the weekend. And that has got to make Jay Johnson, it's got to be like a security blanket. I mean, consider a year ago, you knew you had Paul Skeens on Friday, and after that, everything was up in the air. All the different combinations that you tried, you waited for, for Ty Floyd to come around, you waited for Thatcher Hurd to come around. I mean, you go into, I mean, you're a week away still, another weekend before you start conference play, and you feel like you've got your rotation set, and you've got Kate Anderson, and you know you can rely on Javen Coleman if you need him. So what a luxury it is with this pitching staff right now. Uh, one more thought on the pitching staff as a whole. Over four games in Houston, Rice and then the three games at Minute Maid, LSU's pitchers walked a total of eight batters. Over four games, walked a total of eight batters, and three of them were in the ninth inning by Javen Coleman on Sunday. Like, three of the eight were the last inning that you were in Houston. Up until that point, your pitching had walked five runners total. It's incredible. Throw the ball over the plate, let your defense you know, pick, up, pick you up behind you, and then, well, obviously, if you're Luke Coleman, you go strike out 12. That's pretty good, uh, too. But the point is, man... The pitching staff was awesome. I think you also started to see and develop some roles. You know, Gavin Guidry put out two fires this weekend, including Sunday where, I mean, you're just trying to get the thing home, and 
Coleman runs out of gas. They bring in Primo, and he gives up an RBI single. And then it's like, just give me Gidry. Boom. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Strikeout. Game's over. Gavin Gidry's F-bomb in the, the other team's dugout, which is great to see. I love the edge. you got to have edge on a team. Gavin Gidry brings it. How about Fidel Uyoa? You know, same thing. Came in in the ninth on on Friday with a you know with guys on base, and he put out the fire. Um, he's become that guy that no matter the situation, Jay Johnson knows he can go get him. He'll throw strikes. Um, and then I think Justin Lohr might have been maybe the the big story of the weekend. That's kind of going to be a forgotten story of the weekend. Uh, he was awesome. He went two and a third, nearly ran out of gas. Um, one run on two hits, struck out four, didn't walk anybody. That's kind of what we expected, right, coming in from Xavier from the left side um, to be that guy that can extend out of the bullpen, and he was awesome uh, on uh, on on Saturday. Um, one other thing, and I, I could look, we, I could talk a lot about the offense. I could talk about how, you know, we, we did see Mac Bingham get a day off, and you know, they put Brown and right, and Pearson and left, and there's a lot of different guys that we could talk about. Um, uh, offensively. But I do want to highlight Hayden Travinsky, who over the weekend was 5 of 10. He hit 500 over the weekend. 5 of 10 with a homer and three doubles. Um, and by the way, the homer was massive because that gave you the insurance that you ended up needing against ULL on Saturday. So Travinsky at this point in the season, look, he had a great weekend, but at this point in the season, he's hitting 366. Only Milam has a better batting average right now. He's got an on-base percentage of 536, which is the best on the team. And until this weekend where, in particular on Sunday where he had a couple of strikeouts, he's really cut down on the swing and miss. And maybe it's just because this is a guy that's been in college now for five years and you just, when you've been around that long and you've seen that much, the game slows down, so to speak. But it feels like that with Hayden Travinsky. The, you know, the on-base percentage, I point out, because his walks are what is standing out as well. His ability to be patient at the plate, to take his walks, to get on base, to move runners. I mentioned he had a homer, which was in a, a clutch spot for the team, but also three doubles over the weekend. Travinsky, on, on the season, has struck out in 22% of his at-bats. That number was 25% a year ago, so it's Kind of trending toward the same, but a clip on it, but it feels different. It's a it's a small sample so far early on, but Travinsky, um, I, the, the walks driving up the on base percentage, I think is the big differentiator right now, and you feel good for that guy. You know, he came back, he's got the number eight jersey. You know, he's primarily in a DH role, but he's one of those veteran dudes, kind of like Cade Beloso a year ago, where you just had to have him in the lineup because he was going to give you competitive at bat and he was going to get on base. And uh, Travinsky is doing that right now for this lineup. So in a in a, a lineup that had a lot of questions, you're starting to get answers. And un undeniably, Travinsky is one of those. He's got to be in your lineup and will be in your lineup every day. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're with us. Our show open every day is brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy with the great taste of Bud Light, the official beer of the champs, the official beer of the LSU Tigers. That is Bud Light. Our friends over at Mockler Beverage, man, great community partners as they've been for for 40 years now. Of course, told you a couple of weeks ago, we were down in Lake Charles. Uh, they just acquired Southwest Beverage, so now they're in Lake Charles, Alexandria, and uh, Leesville as well. Of course, drink easy with the great taste of Bud Light, the official beer of the LSU Tigers and the official beer of AFR. Okay, y'all, uh, great weekend all the way around. Um, if, if it was purple and gold this weekend, it won. So, softball team remains the only undefeated team in college softball. The gymnastics team went over 198 again this weekend. Um, the baseball team, as we mentioned, got... Got four wins over the week. And both the men's and women's basketball team each notched, each notched wins this weekend. Matthew Bruni from On3 is going to join us next. We'll talk a little round ball. Stay here. It's AFR. AFR. Love telling you about Action Industries, an official partner of LSU Athletics. If you are a, a maintenance manager at a plant, you're a turnaround coordinator, you're looking to hire a contractor, and you want that personalized service, Action Industries has been servicing the petrochemical and refinery market since 1982. 1982. They're an amazing business. I've loved getting to know the guys and gals over at Action Industries. Uh, of course, with two locations in Bell Rose and then on Highway 30 in Geismer. That, by the way, is their hiring office. So if you want to apply for a job, 
go to the Highway 30 office there in Geismar. You can always call them as well. But you know, with Action Industries, I know this much. The only way you get hired to go work in one of those plants is if you have an exemplary safety record and you do great work. And at Action Industries, they beat the industry san- standard when it comes to safety. It's Action Industries. Check them out online, Facebook, or LinkedIn. It's Action Industries, an official partner of LSU Athletics. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana and their locals. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing, and sheet metal. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. When that final buzzer went off against Georgia on Tuesday, we were out of gas. Guys were exhausted. They'd really emptied the tank over that three-game stretch in less than a week. And I thought our preparation, not from the coaching standpoint, but the players, was terrific. We took Wednesday off guys rested up we came in thursday friday uh really efficient sharp practices uh we got up here late last night basically watched film and and went to bed and and those guys got up locked in ready to go today the shot making in the first half due to the unselfish play was fun to watch but i thought it all started on the defensive end our guys were flying around for the first 20 minutes Matt McMahon, after LSU beat Vanderbilt, Tigers have won four of their last five. A wire-to-wire win there at Memorial Gym, which can be a tricky place to play, but no issue for the Tigers as they led by 20 at half and would cruise past Vanderbilt 75-61. Matthew Bruni on three. The Bengal Tiger joins us for a couple of minutes. How are you, man? Hey, Matt. I'm doing great. I'm sitting here in my car in the rain um, just after Matt McMahon's press conference. Yeah, um, anything of note uh, today from uh, from Matt McMahon with two games to play? Uh, yeah, it was um, – we've got kind of been waiting on 
anything definitive on Jalen Cook or Damian Collins. Um, and he came out and just gave us the updates that we've been waiting for. That Jalen Cook has been suspended mm. um, with uh, after violating team rules and uh, basically the standard that McMahon holds the team to, apparently. And then Damian Collins, the transfer from Kentucky that's only played six games this year, uh, will they'll be looking to get a medical register for him. And then Carlos Stewart, the guard from transfer guard from Santa Clara, who's played 13 games this year, uh, is out for the remainder of the year. So we got finally some yeah. definitive answers on those three. How have, look, when, when Cook returned or was deemed eligible, I think we could look at that, Matthew, as a pretty seminal point in the season where they started to turn things around. How have they been able to keep it going without him? Yeah, weird enough, I, I give him a lot of credit for kind of sparking the, the entire team and kind of getting their feet under them. I mean, you look at Jordan Wright's split before and after Cook, and he just kind of took off as a player. Uh, he helped everyone kind of find their roles. But as the season went on, it became clear they didn't need him as much as he thought they needed him. And that's a really weird balance to strike when you're a point guard of his, you know, caliber is a good player and he's a ball dominant player. So um, I think they became better when he was moving the ball, when he was playing off ball. And uh, you saw some games where he took some bad shots late, late and uh, just kind of looked to, to win the game himself. And, it's become very clear and it was clear at the time that that's not how this team was going to win games. Um, it was nice early on when Jalen Cook came back and he gave them that injection of energy. But now, as you see with the team that the way they're playing right now, I mean, this is a team that's always been defense rebounding and just ball movement and just really tough um, players. So I give him credit, but they've definitely figured it out without him now. You know, Matthew, at, at there's a team that was picked 13th in the league. Now, at worst, even if they lose to Arkansas and Missouri, which I, I'm not sure that I believe that they'll lose both of those games, but even if they did, they'd finish no worse than either 9th or 10th in the conference, regardless of, of what would happen. How, how do you sort of um, uh, encapsulate the job that Matt McMahon and this team have done this year, given what the expectations were and where they stand with two games to go? Yeah, I think, I mean, if you're grading it, you have to at least give them an, an A-, minus, B plus. To me, I, I went into the season saying 7-11 and 11 in conference play uh, would be a win. And I said that thinking that Jalen Cook would you know, be a consistent contributor and a, a very good player for the team. So for them to do this without Jalen Cook, without Damian Collins, and even Carlos Stewart, um, I, I think he deserves uh, a lot of praise and a lot of credit for what he did. And also, I think the roster construction, I might not have given him enough credit for the seniors that he added. Um, you know, college basketball is becoming an older game year over year with the transfers and everything and, and the NIL keeping people in school and Jordan Wright, Will Baker, you know, Hunter Dean, Trey Hannibal, all these guys that are older, they have their flaws, but they're just really tough, really consistent. And I think that's what you've seen with this team fighting back from down 15 plus, you know, uh, hanging in there with good teams and having chances to win. So I think he deserves credit building a, a solid roster and then coaching them up and getting them to 500. So on Twitter at Matthew Bruni underscore, if you want to give him a follow, uh, talking some LSU hoops, I get a, a few thoughts on the women as well. But uh, two games to play, Arkansas and Missouri. What do you see as, hypothetically, if they win both those games, what is the ceiling uh, for this team in postseason? Like, are, are, are we convinced like they're in the NIT play? Do they need to win one? Do they need to win both? What's What's ahead of them? If they win both, I'm pretty com comfortable with them being in the NIT. I think that they they won't need much in the SEC tournament. Uh, with the way the NIT expanded, and they're going to have 32 teams in it now, um, they're going to take the top two that don't make the tournament from the SEC, which will probably be A&M and Ole Miss um, in the net because they have both just fallen off substantially, but they're still relatively high in the net. Mm. And then it's LSU. And so I think the, the NIT is going to take LSU if they – you know, especially if they win these last two games, if they, even if they just split them and maybe get a win in the SEC tournament, I think they'll the NIT will be looking for that. So um, I feel pretty good about that, and I think McMahon, McMahon is going to look at that as a huge opportunity to you know continue to establish his program. What do you uh, what are your thoughts on going to Bud Walton Arena on Wednesday uh, against uh, look a tough place to play and against a team that certainly had its, its challenges this year? 
Yeah, Arkansas has been really weird this year. Um, five and eleven in conference play, but hung in there with Kentucky. Um, you know, beat A and M on the road recently. I, I think this is definitely a talented team. Uh, Musselman always has talented teams at Arkansas, but this is one of the worst that he's he's had. But I, I don't know if LSU will be favored, but it's definitely one where I think the experience of LSU is going to help a lot. I, I look at it similar to that, like Florida game and. Um, those type of games where they just kind of hang in there for a bit. Uh, Arkansas has been really good against the free throw line. Arkansas is a really tough team and a really athletic team, so maybe I think they can present them some problems. But um, I, I expect LSU to hang in there and have a shot to win it again, just kind of how the season's gone. Um, and if they get that win, then like you said, I expect them to be Missouri, so that would be huge. Yeah, Missouri's winless in SEC play with two games to go. Um, before you go, I'm going to get a thought on the women who uh, who had no trouble with Kentucky on Sunday. And and honestly, one of the biggest takeaways since the back-to-back losses South Carolina uh, and Mississippi State, they haven't allowed an opponent to score over 66 points. They've clamped down defensively. What has been the biggest reason for this um, uh, this surge by the women over the last month? Yeah, I think it is a – it's a, definitely a team thing, first and foremost. I think their help defense has gotten a lot better. Um, I think the defense kind of goes as Angel Reese goes, which, you know, Angel is known for rebounding and her scoring. But um, defensively, when she's engaged, you see it. We saw it when they beat Virginia Tech earlier this year. You see it in the South Carolina when she gave them problems. Um, she kind of sets the ceiling for this team defensively, and I think she's been a lot better and more consistent. And then on the perimeter, uh, Haley Van List and last year Poa have made, I think, substantial strides forward. And so they've allowed them to kind of get after the ball, uh, force more turnovers, and kind of force teams to settle a bit more. So I think those two, that's kind of where Kim Mulkey has spent a lot of her energy. And then also the transition defense side of things, uh, where when they miss shots, they go for the offensive glass so hard it takes a lot of energy to get back, and it's such a focus that I think Mulkey's finally drilled it into them. So I'm really excited for this tournament. I, they they could possibly play Auburn, who's given them hell twice yeah. um, on, uh, on what would that be, Friday, and uh, we'll see how they do. Is this team capable of a repeat? Yes, I, I do. Okay. I mean, just looking across the country, I think South Carolina is very, very good. I don't think they're as good as they've been the past few years, but – Outside of that, I think LSU can play with anybody. I mean, I'm just watching, you know, Iowa, UConn, uh, Texas, go down the list. I, I put LSU on that on that second tier right behind, or I mean, behind South Carolina. Uh, he's Matthew Bruni on 3 The Bengal Tiger on Twitter, at Matthew Bruni underscore. Y'all give him a follow. Hey, man, we appreciate a couple of minutes. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Anytime. All right, man, be well. It's after further review. We're glad to have you aboard with us here. We're brought to you by our friends over at Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Gentlemen, if you're thinking of popping the question, why in the world would you go anywhere else? Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. Been servicing uh, our state now for four decades. Online at lmfj.com. You can walk into any of the Lee Michaels locations. Two of them in Baton Rouge, corporate in Bocage. They're in the Mall of Louisiana. New Orleans, Lafayette, Shreveport. Of course, online at lmfj.com. You know, so much of buying a diamond is about the experience of buying a diamond. And do you really want to walk into a store where there's a disheveled guy pulling out a calculator, crunching numbers to tell you how much you're saving as he marks down a, a no, no. You want to walk into a place where they hand you chocolates on a, on a tray, they offer you a beverage, where you feel like you're doing something important and lifelong that you're going to remember forever. That's Lee Michaels. That's the Lee Michaels experience. If they don't have what you want, they can get it, or they can custom make any piece of jewelry as well. And at Lee Michaels, they accept returns. If she's not thrilled with it, they want to make her thrilled with it. It's Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. LMFJ.com for Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. All right, y'all, it's after further review. Um, I do want to I do have some thoughts in about 15 minutes on the the Pistol P Caitlin Clark uh thing that everybody's talking about. Um, I don't know that my opinion is gonna be dramatically different from anybody else that's listening. I mean, it's we all feel a, a certain way about it, but I, I do want to talk about it. So we'll do that here in about 15 minutes from right now. And um at the top of hour two, if you remember before the draft, we we talked about who I felt had the, the most to gain and the most to lose from the LSU perspective. Most to gain, I thought, was Mason Smith, right? Um, a guy who had seen his stock probably drop a lot this year, but you knew he was going to go test incredibly well. So he had the most to gain. Most to lose, I thought, was, was Brian Thomas because I don't, didn't know how much really he could 
gain with a great performance, but if he didn't perform well, he could certainly fall in a very deep receiver draft. Well, suffice to say, Brian Thomas had himself a good weekend there in Indy, so we'll get to that in about half an hour from right now. Wilson Alexander, an hour two, uh, LSU's on the practice field for the first time in spring uh, on Tuesday. So a lot to do today. We're glad you're hanging out. Stick around with us. It's AFR presented by Relief Windows. AFR. Hey, y'all, uh, later this week is the next installment of Evenings at the Renaissance. Keep telling you all about this. Great events that they're doing. If You've heard me talk about Tallulah, the restaurant there inside of the Renaissance Hotel, or you know how, uh, how great the indoor-outdoor flow is with their terrace. They have so many great opportunities to check it out. They have a charcuterie culinary class coming up uh, this Thursday, so in just three days. It's 6.30 until 8 p.m. The package includes a, a charcuterie board and a flight of wine. So you want to get the missus or the girlfriend, you'll go out on a date, experience something different. What a charcuterie culinary class at the Renaissance this Thursday from 6.30 until 8 p.m. The Renaissance right there on Blue Bonnet. Yes, look, they can host your meeting or event of any size from a, a dozen to up to 500. If you have family coming in for a game or for a holiday, have them stay there at the Renaissance, but always, it's a great place to go experience an evening at the Renaissance. And this Thursday, the charcuterie culinary class coming up at the Renaissance Hotel. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes Benz Vans. REC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. REC, your number one park system in the nation. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com.
after further review, presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. A few weeks ago, when we learned that EA Sports College Football 2025 was coming back and they would have players, players could choose to opt in. If they did, they'd get $600 and a copy of the video game. And uh, most people thought that that was a no-brainer. There were some that still bemoaned the players deserved more. Well, as of uh, this was as of Friday night, EA Sports is at 10,000 athletes opt in to the game. 10,000. You have 134 FBS programs. They can all have a maximum of 85 players on the game. You've already had 10,000 opt in. Uh, and that's just after, that's, that was just a little more than a week after they opened the process. Freshmen, by the way, can opt in once they enroll. So you're still going to have more players opt in once, obviously, freshmen enroll in school. So, um, and you've got some big name players: Travis Hunter, Quinn Ewers, uh, Carson Beck, Jalen Milrow, Dylan Gabriel. Some of the biggest names in the sport. But the bottom line is, it's so much more about being able to play with your school, whatever school, with their logo, with their brand, all of their their marks. And the players are clearly showing you like. They don't want more. They just think it's cool to be in a game. Oh, I'm also going to get 600 bucks a copy of the game. Cool. That's how it's going to roll. Because if not, then they would have just released the game without players on it at all. So good for them. Uh, this is one of the sensible things that both EA Sports and college athletes have done. So EA College Football 25, uh, more than 10,000 athletes have already opted into the game. Did we talk about this before? Are y'all going to get the game, Muse, Pauly? You gonna get it? We we talked about it, but uh, I, I said maybe I haven't. Decided. Maybe, yeah. Paulie, you're not a gamer, yeah. right? You don't you don't. No, in my younger days, yeah. Yeah, not yeah, yeah. The only I don't know if I, if I told this before, but the only uh, I've never played EA Sports, the college football game. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I had a roommate after college, uh, Doctor uh, Ski Batansky. Um, terrifying thought, but he's a really good doctor. Uh, <laughs> I would hope so. Uh, I mean, some of the stories I could tell to his patients, they go run. But uh, hey, but look, we all we all get on the straight and narrow in life, right? Anyway, but like Ski would play with West Virginia. I don't know why, but he would be West Virginia, and then he did one of those like what are the the study not study it's not abroad, but um where you go study you go to a different school for a semester. Um, it's not study exchange. Like yeah, it was exchange. exchange. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Um, so he did like he did a semester at West Virginia, went into Morgantown. Uh, and I think it was because of that game, probably. Huh. And I don't know why he picked it or anything like that. But like the, I still hear the West Virginia fight song in my head. Just over, and over. over and over and over and over again. Anyway, so that's the closest I ever got to the game. But but congrats to everybody. I mean, everybody wanted this. It's cool to see like sensibility come into factor with all of this stuff. All right, it's after further review. We do it every day about this time. Let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, bringing you the biggest news from the nation's best conference, the Florida Gators. All right, two uh, staff moves here for Billy Napier. Jonathan DeCoster has been hired as an offensive assistant line coach uh, for the Cleveland uh, from the Cleveland Browns. He'll join the Gators staff as co-offensive line coach. He'll work alongside Rob Sale. DeCoster as a Florida native who played um, at ULL under Billy Napier. Uh, and they're also hiring Jeremy Patterson from Rutgers as an assistant defensive line coach. Uh, Bruce Feldman, hat tip, had that news first. The Georgia Bulldogs. Offensive lineman Chad Lindbergh has entered the transfer portal as a grad transfer. Remember, if you're a graduate, you don't have to wait on the portal window. A former four-star prospect from the 2020 class. He's able to play immediately. Uh, reserved for most of his career there at Georgia. 12 games uh, this past season. He's played um, tackle. Um, for uh, uh, for Georgia, he's the 18th player from Georgia's roster this past season to enter the portal. The Alabama Crimson Tide. Four-star defensive lineman Antonio Coleman has flipped from Auburn to Alabama. Uh, he committed uh, back on December the 22nd. He is uh, a 6'2", 270-pounder for the class of 2025, the number 124 overall player in the country, the number 11 defensive lineman for the 2025 class. The Kentucky Wildcats. Philadelphia three-star running back Isaiah West has committed to Kentucky, choosing the Wildcats over Wisconsin, Nebraska, and North Carolina. Number 74, uh, excuse me, number 704. That's a big difference between the number 74 prospect and the number 704 prospect. 
there's like, you know, 630 spots between them. Anyways, the 59th best running back in the country for 2025, uh, number 19 player in Pennsylvania, the third commit for Kentucky's 2025 class. The Auburn Tigers. And uh, Lior Bergman suffered a season-ending ACL injury against Mississippi State Saturday night, out for the rest of the season. Walked onto the roster, slowly worked his way into a larger role over the last four seasons. Was a scholarship player this past season on Bruce Pearl's squad, or this season. Six four guards played 27 games this season, uh, but he's out for the rest of the year. Okay, there you have it. That is around the SEC. We're presented by the Williamson Eye Center. If you want to see 2020, call 924-2020, 924-2020, or williamsoneye.com. I actually had a buddy text me this weekend who uh, said, hey, remind me who did your LASIK. My wife's interested. She has monovision and uh, trying to think of what she can do. And I said, look, go see Dr. Blake. Like, I don't know if it's LASIK. I don't know if it's something else. Um, but let Dr. Blake figure all that out. Uh, there's nobody that I would trust. He's the best. There are people who literally come from all over Louisiana and all over the region to have their refractive procedure done at the Williamson Eye Center because Dr. Blake Williamson is the best. So uh, he's who I trusted to put a laser beam on my eyeball, and I wouldn't recommend uh, anyone else other than Dr. Blake Williamson. So if uh, you want to see 2020, you want to ditch the contacts and glasses forever, call 924-2020. 924-2020 for the Williamson Eye Center, williamsoneye.com. Uh, real quick, um, one last thing we'll break come back I'll talk about the Pistol Pete Caitlin Clark thing here but um, the NCAA uh, is pausing all NIL investigations I don't know if you heard this but the NCAA took a loss in the courtroom in the whole Tennessee thing remember the NCAA hit Tennessee with some sanctions about NIL and Tennessee punched back they went to court, and the court ruled in favor of Tennessee. I'm oversimplifying this. So the NCAA has basically said, okay, we're, we're not investigating NIL anymore because they keep taking L's in the courtroom. And I know one of the things that was most um, striking to me was um, many of you, you may know I do an NIL podcast with Jonathan Pixley from Matchpoint. Matchpoint is a Louisiana-based company that services athletes and brands all over the country. Um, matching the the athlete with the brand and so forth. And they work with a lot of collectives and stuff as well. Anyway, Pix and I did a podcast called Rosters to Riches, an NIL podcast. And I don't know, two years ago, uh, we had attorney David Fleshman on the show. You might remember David Fleshman played basketball at LSU under John Brady. He was on the Final Four team. He's an attorney now, and he specializes in a lot of these NIL cases. And he, and he said, this was two years ago. It was two years ago Fleshman said this. He said, the lawsuits are already drawn. If if the NCAA ever tries to cap or restrict NIL, like the lawsuits are already drawn and ready to be filed. And I, I thought of that immediately whenever I saw the Tennessee thing. Now, if you remember, the NCAA first kind of went after Miami and went after Florida and now Tennessee. And it was like, it was easy, I think, for fans of other schools to, to point and laugh. And my point was, hey, look, be careful because if you know, they can point the finger at anybody in, in this era, they're just, I don't know, for whatever reason, chose these programs because they had you know, big, very public um, and NIL deals, so to speak. Um, but ultimately, what it's come to is the NCAA has realized they, they cannot regulate NIL in any way because you just they keep filing lawsuits. And the NCAA is going to keep losing because the way they've been structured forever is illegal. So it's why they keep losing. So um, I guess it's a great thing because you can stop worrying or fretting over whether or not the NCAA is going to point is going to put your school in the crosshairs. I mean, just think back to the whole Will Wade situation. Everybody in college basketball was cheating. Everybody. It's just you weren't winning if you weren't cheating to some degree. And LSU got caught in that whole crossfire, and we, we know what the, end, what the end game was. And so you always fear, like, what if the NCAA comes snooping around your place? Well, now you don't have to worry about it with NIL anymore because the NCAA says we're pausing all investigations after another courtroom L. So good. Uh, we, we move more toward uh, a fair and equitable system for – those that manage it, and the athletes that play in it. Okay, 
Let me not get a break, y'all. Our Monday shows are brought to you by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding. Oh, yeah. They do indoor shutters as well. Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. They're the best. Let me not get a break. Um, Caitlin Clark passed Pistol Pete over the weekend, but, I mean, did she really? Did, what, whatever. I, well, we'll talk about that next. It's AFR. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's.com. Rouse's.com. Y'all, Saturday... I went to Rouse's. First time I've done this. Um, we didn't have anything going on this weekend. And we got a Rouse's buyer house. The long form Rouse's is a long farm on airline. So I went over there, took Drew with me, and uh, I kind of wanted some crab legs. Insert Jameis Winston joke here. whatever. But they had a la- I like to eat Alaskan king crab legs and have them steam them. So I went to Rouse's. They had two big, long crab legs left and I was like give me both of them um and it was magnificent had the corn and potatoes the the boiled corn and potatoes already bag tag grab and go so easy and delicious I'm telling you if it's a Friday lunch or any day you want dinner you want seafood they got you over at Rouse's you make groceries they've been helping you do that forever it's Rouse's the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints Rouse's this feels like home electricity is all around us and our families depend on it Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. a mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected supported by a five-star sales service and finance team and backed by the one star you know so go the extra mile it's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there mercedes-benz vans Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12... After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. This for college basketball history. She does it with a foul shot. Caitlin Clark becomes the all-time leading scorer 
in major college basketball history. Passing Pistol Pete Maravich. Uh, congrats to Caitlin Clark. Um, it's so hard to have this conversation because it feels like anything that I say is going to feel like a yeah, but, um, and that's the thing that annoys me the most about this conversation because the yeah, but is so unnecessary yet the way everyone is trying to frame this conversation, it necessitates it. Um, Kalen Clark is amazing. Uh, they start the NCAA sanctioned women's college basketball in 1982. So in 42 years, she has done something that no other woman has done. In 42 years, that is amazing. She has set the women's scoring record that might stand for another 50 years or longer. We'll see. Like no caveat. Amazing. She has made a lot of people, by the way, how many people even knew Caitlin Clark's name before the women's final four a year ago where she went off on the upset South Carolina? My hands in the air. I had no idea who she was. Watched the game against South Carolina and then obviously would follow. She's amazing. Congrats to her. The, the comparisons to Pete Maravich, though, annoy me. And I get it. I get it. I went to LSU. I love LSU. If you know, people always do the thing, hey, if there's one athlete you could watch that you never got to see play, who would it be? For me, without hesitation, the list is one. It's Pete Maravich. There is no other. Like that is the list for me. Um and so yes, I'm coming at at this conversation from a, a totally biased position. Um I just hate when we do this because it this has created unnecessarily this very um animosity driven like argument among people. And literally any post about Caitlin Clark, if you would go read any comments, it's yeah, but Pete did it in three years. Yeah, but Pete did it in 83 games. Yeah, but Pete didn't have the three point line. And all of that is true. And none of that really matters. Because if the kid from Detroit Mercy last year had passed Pete Maravich, you'd have to honor his record. He had an extra year because of COVID. I'd say it all the time. Like, O.J. Simpson, had before he became a murderer, O.J. Simpson, the football player, had a 2,000-yard rushing season in 14 NFL games. Guess what? They play 17 now. Dan Marino had a 5,000-yard passing season. There have been like 11 of those since the year 2011. It's just a different time. Times evolve, games change, rules change, and records get broken. That, that's what happens. The problem here is, like, what are we comparing? They're not even remotely the same thing. I mean, you can say it, Pete did it in three years and in 83 games and didn't have a three-point line. All that's true, but there's an even more glaring qualifier. Uh, he's a man, and she's a woman. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to compare records, then you have to compare them based on things that are equal. What if Pete Maravich had played against women? What if Caitlin Clark played against men? He didn't. She didn't. They're not the same. So don't compare them. Like, do you realize the NCAA, if you go look at the official NCAA record book, there is no record combining men's and women's basketball. Not just scoring, rebounds or coaches wins or any of the things that people love to plaster on TV. And it always creates this great like sense of animus among, among fans. And the shame of it is you can't appreciate like you're not fully appreciating greatness because it feels like in so doing, you're minimizing something else that's great. And that sucks. Like Caitlin Clark is amazing and Pete Maravich was amazing. Can't they both just be amazing at the thing they do? Why do we have to compare the two of them?
they're not the same. Just like Gino Ariema winning more, you know, thousand games or whatever, like him doing that. And I mean, I women's basketball didn't even become sanctioned in the NCAA until twelve years after Pete broke the record or set the record. It's just like to me, that's akin to like Bailey Zappi holds the NCAA's pass single season passing record. He threw for fifty nine hundred yards that year at Western Kentucky. That's like saying Bailey Zappi is football's all-time passing leader. Like, he holds the record over NFL quarterbacks or any... Like, but it's just not the same thing. So let what he did be great and let what NFL quarterbacks have done be great. And why do we do... Why do we have to do this thing? I mean... is Do I need to say it any more clear than, like, there is no... There is no joint record book in the NCAA. Go look at NCAA.com at their records, and there is no joint record. So why do we have to do this? Because in so doing, all it does is call into que- is make people call into question the legitimacy of what people are claiming about Caitlin Clark instead of celebrating a truly remarkable thing and remarkable person athlete that's brought new eyeballs to a sport, made people care about it, and she's generated, you know, wealth for herself and is going to do awesome and that's made so many little girls cheer for her and that's so many wonderful things but there's the yeah but because of the way people try to frame it congrats to caitlin clark she's awesome hour two next afr we're brought to you by first south farm credit first southland.com first southland.com if you are even thinking about buying land your first call should be to first south Farm credit since 1916. How about that? More than 100 years. First South Farm Credit. Louisiana based. They got 44 branches across three different states, however. So if you're thinking of buying that hunting property in Mississippi, you want to go buy a big rural truck, track of land in Montana, they can help you do that as well. Doesn't matter. They can buy, they can help you finance land in the contiguous 48. So no matter where you want to buy land in the contiguous 48, First South Farm Credit can help. But look, maybe. You want that tract of land to help, you know, where you can build your family's dream home. Maybe you want that thousand acres for agriculture. Maybe you need to finance farm equipment. They can do that as well. It's First South Farm Credit. Look them up online at firstsouthland.com. Your first call should be to First South Farm Credit. Firstsouthland.com. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks, have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us.
Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi. Quarterback Russell Wilson will be a free agent for the first time in his NFL career. The Broncos will release him after the new league year begins March 13th and will take an $85 million dead money hit over the next two seasons. A Philadelphia sports icon, instrumental in the Eagles Super Bowl title run six years ago, has called it a career. 36-year-old center Jason Kelsey announced his retirement. He was a six-time All-Pro, three of those nods coming in the last three seasons, and he'll certainly be missed in Philly, explains ESPN's Mina Kimes. Moving forward, the void they have to fill, it's not just leadership and, and you know, you, Cam Jurgens is going to step up and play that position, but it's so scheme-specific because his unique skill set allowed them to do things in the run game they probably won't be able to do anymore because few teams can. Mina on NFL Live. ESPN's Adam Schefter's reporting. Standout receiver Mike Evans and the Buccaneers agreed on a two-year, $52 million contract, $35 million guaranteed. Chiefs officially placed the non-exclusive franchise tag on cornerback Legereus Sneed. They are open to trading him for the right price. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Cannon, coming up Tuesday. It's franchise tag deadline day. I'll tell you which players end up getting the tag and which players end up on new teams. It's on Sportsman like 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. Shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You so. And Mr. Toby Tumplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there, make it a good one. Uh, David Delucci talking some baseball one hour from right now. Wilson Alexander in 15 minutes tigers hit the practice field for the first time kicking off spring football tomorrow tuesday so we'll get to that with wilson here in about 15 minutes from right now going into the combine i highlighted two lsu players i said uh i felt mason smith was the player with the most to gain i had a i think admittedly a uh a less productive season than many were hoping to see from mason smith coming off the ACL, but we knew athletically how gifted he is. And man, if he went to the combine and tested exceptionally well, that he could really race up some draft boards. And man, uh, Mason Smith, by all accounts, was <laughs> pretty, pretty athletic and, uh, and did really well. So um, uh, he ran a 501-40, by the way, and looked looks like the freak show that he is. Um. But I said the player that I felt had the most potentially to lose was Brian Thomas. And it wasn't saying that I thought Brian Thomas would go do poorly. It was just to say this is a really, really deep receiver draft class. And if and it's unlikely that Brian Thomas was going to be able to overtake the top three guys, Harrison, Neighbors, and Roma Dunze. 
So you looked at it and were like, man, Brian Thomas could go absolutely solidify himself as a first-round pick, or if he stumbles, you could see some of the really talented players in this receiver draft class. If it was uh, Xavier Worthy who ran a 4-2-1, if it was Jalen Polk, uh, you could see uh, Keon Coleman. You could see some players potentially overtake him. Well, needless to say, uh, mission accomplished for Brian Thomas. We know he ran a 4-3-3 in the 40, and Mel Kuyper put out his list of the combine draft risers, like who went to the combine, crushed it, did really well. And of the handful of players that he highlighted, one of them was Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU. And I'll read the write-up that, that Kuyper wrote. He said, yes, Worthy set the combine record with a 4 2 yard dash, and his 10-yard split came in at 149. Thomas ran a little bit slower, 4 3 3 which ranked second among the receivers in Indy, but his 10-yard split was barely behind Worthy at 1.50. And Thomas did that four inches taller and 44 pounds heavier than Worthy. Kuyper goes on to say, I write all that to say Thomas' overall workout was extremely impressive, backing up his spot in my pre-combine big board number 11 overall. Even though it's going to be hard for him to rise too much from here, this was an important event for him. He's explosive off the line of scrimmage. Might seem strange to say for a wide who led the FBS with 17 touchdown catches last season. But Thomas is just scratching the surface of his talent in a loaded receiver class. Don't count him out as being a future number one wide receiver. So, Mel Kuyper sold on Brian Thomas after his 40. And I think the line in that write-up from Mel that stands out the most is where he said, even though it's going to be hard for him to rise too much from here. That was the point I made pre-combine. Look at the receivers ahead of him in a deep draft class. It was unlikely for him to, to do anything to overtake the three ahead of him. Fair or unfair? I mean, I think they're all amazing. But if there's a consensus that those are the top three, Brian Thomas, the best he could do is rise up to four or solidify himself there. But boy, there was a long way to go down, and he clearly solidified himself where he is, did so at 6'3", 209. Hard to imagine Brian Thomas falling out around one. I mean, he this is a loaded receiver draft class, and he's going to be taken high in it. Um, but I, but it's one of those things also where in a in a different year, like Brian Thomas could be a top ten pick. Look at last year's receiver draft class. The, the top receiver taken in the draft a year ago, just to compare what it's like in a given year, why, the, why just this year's draft class works against Brian Thomas. The top receiver taken a year ago was Jackson Smith and Jigba, number 20 overall. There may be four receivers taken ahead of that this year. At least four, maybe more. Quint, there was, By the way, last year there was a run of four straight receivers taken. 20 through 23. Jackson Smith and Jigba, Quentin Johnson, Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison went 20, 21, 22, 23. My point is, Brian Thomas a year ago is probably a top 10 pick. Brian Thomas a year ago is the best receiver in that draft. He's just in a draft class that's loaded with talent. By contrast, look, look two years ago. Drake London went eighth overall. Garrett Wilson went 10. Chris Olave went 11. Jamison Williams went 12. Jahan Dotson went 16. Traylon Burks went 18. He had six receivers in the top 18 picks two, two years ago. So, so much of it really just depends on the draft that you're in. What do teams need? How deep is the position that you're in in that draft? So, for Thomas, phenomenal. I think he's locked himself in as a first-round draft pick. It just kind of sucks for him that he's in a draft that's so deep at receiver. But it's an amazing three-year leap for Brian Thomas. And he's one of those guys who's a rare guy, man. You played at Walker nearby, not a super outspoken guy. He was really low-key in his recruiting process. Remember, he didn't commit until the very end. Like, he didn't commit anywhere. It wasn't a back-and-forth thing. He just quietly went through his recruiting process, picked LSU, committed, signed. And really, his first two years on campus, despite being such a you know high four-star, five-star receiver, were a little quiet as he just waited his turn. You know, as a freshman at 28 catches for 359 yards, as a sophomore, 31 for 361, you know, just playing his role in a deep receiving room 
And then, boom, here comes his junior year. 68 for 1177, leads the country with 17 touchdowns. And now he's about to go make himself a big pile of money. And he certainly solidified that with his performance at the Combine. So congrats to Brian Thomas Jr. on a great, great Combine in Indy this weekend. All right, it's after further review. We're glad to have you hanging out with us here. Love telling you about Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. If you need tires, you need Shaw Bills. Name brand tires at wholesale prices. Shaw Bills, they are just simply the best. I always encourage you when you go to the Shaw Bills website, do it on desktop or you know the, the mobile site as well on your phone. Go to the website, hit the promotions tab, and you'll see all the promotions. I tell you all the time that Shaw Bills will get you name brand tires at wholesale prices. They work so hard with the manufacturer's offer, their in-house discounts as well to get you the best tires on the road for the cheapest price possible. Like right now, I'm looking at you know, hand, uh, uh, Hancook, Nitto, Bridgestone, Firestone. There's so many great offers at Shaw Bills. ShawBillsTire.com, ShawBillsTire.com. If you're thinking about buying tires, if you need to buy tires, man, save big at Shaw Bills, where you always get the Charlie's Dozen. ShawBillsTire.com, Shaw Bills, where we keep you rolling. All right, uh, LSU football, speaking of which, is going to be on the practice field Tuesday for the start of spring ball. Wilson Alexander will be with us to talk about uh, some of the big um, uh, topics and storylines we'll be watching here at the start of spring ball. That's coming up uh, right after this break. And um, we will, you probably saw this uh, over the weekend, but there's some scuttle about it coming out of the combine about the Saints possibly uh, trading Marshawn Lattimore. I do have thoughts on that. We'll get to that here in about 15 minutes from right now. Um, David DeLucci next hour. Chris Trapasso from CBS Sports. He'll be with us as well. I want to get a a big picture takeaway from the combine. How did all the LSU guys do? Who are the Saints contingent? We're we're looking there. Who are the risers, the fallers? We'll get to all that with Chris Trapasso in hour number three. So, man, we are loaded. Ton to do today. Glad you're with us. If you missed our, uh, our LSU baseball weekend recap, we opened the show with that, so you can catch that on demand, of course, on uh, just your favorite podcast app, search After Further Review, or go to the AFR YouTube channel. All right, it's After Further Review. We'll talk some LSU football with Wilson Alexander next. AFR. Get Gordon and get it done. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys. Uh, speaking of, the newest member of the G team is that Big Bear. Bear Jones is the newest member of the G team. Gordon McKernan, injury attorneys, continues expanding that roster with NIL deals to some great student athletes across many different sports, both men and women. And Bear Jones with LSU Baseball is the latest. You can go to Get Gordon, uh, at Get Gordon on any of the social media channels, Twitter, X, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok. Catch it all there, at Get Gordon. Or go to GordonGives.com. GordonGives.com. Gordon Gives is the charitable arm of Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys. So if you want to see Grubbin' with G or Riding with G or any of their specialty content there, or a lot of the ways that Gordon and his team give back to the communities they serve, you can go to GordonGives.com. To learn more, it's Gordon McKernan, injury attorney for more than 30 years. We tell you all the time you've been injured in an accident. It's not your fault. Do what injured people in our state have done for more than 30 years. Go to getgordon.com, getgordon.com. Get Gordon and get it done. IU Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23 1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Was a human day Barefoot children play Looking for the summer shade Time to slip Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com 
or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you, our mobile banking app. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Wilson Alexander had a sit down with Brian Kelly last week, and the, the quote that came of it, of course, was about Harold Perkins moving inside linebacker. Um, on the eve of LSU uh, returning to the field for uh, the start of spring practice, we welcome Wilson Alexander to the show. How are you, man? Doing well, Matt. How are you today? Doing really well. Um, the... The quote that you ran from Brian Kelly, uh, sometimes people react in a certain way to a, a piece of a long-form conversation that you have to, to boil down. Was um, Is there any more context or anything f with the conversation when you were sitting there talking to Brian Kelly about Harold Perkins that stood out? Well, I mean, the thing that stood out, I, I think, uh, was probably what people kind of remember the most, that he'll be going back to inside linebacker. I mean, most specifically, maybe some of the things that get lost in translation – with this or that he's going to be the will linebacker, the weak side linebacker, um, you know, for those who kind of know football knowledge, uh, you know, terminology, uh, that's kind of specifically where he'll be playing. And, but, you know, very, for more of a boiled down version, you know, he's going to be in the box and they want him to be active around the line of scrimmage and not pulled away from, you know, the, the action. And I think maybe what uh, might better answer your question is kind of how they got here. LSU's defense now is going to have what's called a star position. Um, you see these across college football. Georgia has one. Uh, Alabama has one. You know, the Nick Saban defense has always had them. And it's so uh, something that's very prevalent. Uh, but LSU hasn't used that position, um, at least in a few years. I'm not sure if it ever necessarily has. And it's kind of a nickel and it's kind of a cross between, you know, what Harold did last year as the Sam nickel linebacker. Um, but it's usually played by defensive backs. And Brian, you know, said last week uh, that that's not where they want Harold to be. And so, you know, without that with that position and that kind of spot on the defense changing a little bit, um, inside linebacker is, you know, kind of a natural, I guess, maybe slide over, maybe more better suited for him. But obviously we see that that didn't go well last year. And so um, it's going to have to be a lot better with new coaching. And that's something else is that, you know, under an aggressive style of defense that you would think LSU is now going to have with Blake Baker, um, perhaps that will help it work out better. At least that's the hope. Every time – they go out for spring or fall camp. There's always storylines, and you brought up the coaching. I, I, when you replace the staff on an entire staff on one side of the ball, that clearly is going to be one of the foremost storylines. What are are you expecting to see, thinking to see, looking for um, at at practice throughout spring and, and on on day one Tuesday? Well, uh, in terms of like what we're going to see differences in terms of yeah. coaching, you know, and yeah, like I mean. First, right off the bat, is are they doing anything differently in terms of like tackling and coaching tackling and some of the fundamentals that this team struggled with last year and run fits and um, pursuing the football? Um, you know, there's certainly things that they practiced over the last few years, but are they going to do anything differently in that regard to try to improve some of those basic things that this team struggled with defensively? Is probably something that we'll be able to glean a little bit of during spring ball, uh, but also just, you know, in terms of schematics, what is this Blake Baker defense going to look like? 
Um, it's you know known for being multiple at Missouri, and they've mixed up their coverages a good bit. And uh, you know they, you could watch a game to game at Missouri, and they did you know four two five and a three three five, and they mixed things up. But what is he going to do here at LSU? Maybe we'll start to figure that out a little bit, even though we all know how vanilla spring yeah. can be. Um, but on another level, just uh, you know, what is the what are these coaches getting out of these players? Are they putting them in the best position to succeed? You know, those are questions we'll keep asking. I don't know if we'll necessarily find out in the spring, but um, that's certainly something to, that I'll be like, kind of trying to find out looking for. And, and also on top of that, just who's winning these position battles like at corner? What? About, well, I, I was going to ask you about defensive line. Since you brought up corner, let's just go there. What, what's your thought on what we're going to see at corner this spring? Well, it's a completely wide open competition. Um, I think we're going to see guys rotating in and out of there. And, you know, one day we might be out there and we see – somebody at first team corner and the next day we might see somebody else, you know, cause there's so many guys at that position, um, but none of them being proven, uh, you know, we'll get a good, better look at JK Johnson coming off the injury, Jair Brown transfer from Ohio state, Ashton Sams and does Sage Ryan stick a corner? Does he move over to maybe nickel or play the star or something like that? Same thing with JV and Toviano. Where is he at? I think that we're going to see a lot of rotation, um, and that there's going to be just a, the signs of a wide open competition that really probably won't get figured out unless somebody just explodes onto the scene here during the spring. Um, and even then, uh, won't get figured out until preseason camp. I didn't prep you for this, but off the top, do you know if anybody's not available? I, I would assume, um, Zai Alexander would not be available, but anybody else not available in that secondary for spring? Zai's the only one, uh, okay. but in the, the the slight positive silver lining to all that is that Brian Kelly said that he's expected to be back for summer workouts, and that with that, unless there's any setbacks, he'll be able to participate, at least they expect him to, uh, come preseason camp. So that's obviously a good thing with a guy who started eight games last year, being able to go back into that kind of a competition. Um, then he's the only one across the entire team, not just the secondary, who, when I asked Brian Kelly, who will miss spring practice, uh, he, he was the only person uh, who Kelly named. Uh, he's on Twitter at WH Alexander underscore or Wales Xander underscore <laughs> do it that way, either way. Um, hey, look, so let me ask you about the defensive line because that's, that has got to be the position group that is the most obviously glaring weakness just from a body's standpoint. Why did, when you talked about that with Brian Kelly, why might he have reason for optimism there? What are they going to do there with, uh, with that defensive line, the interior defensive line spot? Well, you know, they, it, it's still a position of concern. Um, and, and talking to Brian Kelly, you know, he, he's not doom and gloom about it, but he did is acknowledging that, you know, that's something that they're going to have to shore up and kind of figure out. Um, I think that they're going to go after that position again come the spring transfer portal window. Um, but in the meantime, you know, they're going to move Kimo McAneoli over there from the offensive line to at least provide some depth. And that was kind of where Kelly was maybe expressing optimism is he thinks that they've got – now enough depth to get through the spring. Um, you know, in the season, that's maybe a different com- kind of conversation, maybe a different tone. But at least for these next, you know, months, these 15 practices, you know, they've got now technically five sort of scholarship defensive tackles plus some walk-ons there. So it's enough to maybe, you know, kind of run through things normally and not have to fully adjust just because um, you're so thin at defensive tackle. And so maybe that was some optimism. Um, but he certainly acknowledges that you know that's still a position of concern and a place where they're going to have to figure things out and and maybe make some additions because of the uh, numbers problem there at defensive tackle. Yeah, Kimo Makaneoli, who spent his whole career as an offensive line, is going to flip over to defensive line just so they have some numbers. But reinforcements are are going to be on the way uh, come come fall ball. But still a ways till we get there. Um, a couple more for you. It's amazing, Wilson. You and I have been talking almost ten minutes now. I haven't even brought up Garrett Nussmeyer. <laughs> so, I mean, it's kind of the nature of, of what they're facing right on the defensive side. So let me ask you a, about Garrett and your conversation with Brian Kelly, what he had to say about his starter. The word that Brian kept using was consistency, and that they want to draw that more out of Garrett Nussmeyer. We've all seen Garrett Nussmeyer's arm talent and what he's capable of throwing you know, on a football field and what he can do with his arm. But he's a less than 60% career passer who's thrown seven interceptions and 219 career attempts. They want him to be a little bit more consistent in his progression, not abort early, which is something that Brian Kelly said he sometimes had a tendency to do. Um, and they want to see him just be consistency at practice um, in terms of how he's kind of leading the offense and how he's holding himself and his attention to detail. That's uh, something that Jaden Daniels did a good job of over the last two years and now as the starter. And that's Garrett's turn to show that he can do that. He always, Garrett, talking to Garrett over the last month, you know, uh, going to the bowl game, he always tried to hold himself to that, but it's just different being the starter. 
So they want him to be consistent in practice in terms of how he's approaching every day and then consistent in terms of what he's doing technically in order to become a passer who, as Kelly said, if he can be consistent, can be really, really good. Are they going to try to add any more running backs, Wilson? You know, he didn't say. It wasn't quite something we got into. I, I don't know yet. I think we'll find out kind of over the course of the spring. You know, they're in a tough situation here, obviously, with Trey Holly indefinitely suspended and Kadem Durr not getting here until the summer. That's one thing that did come up was just how careful they're going to have to be with Josh Williams and Caleb Jackson yeah. here throughout the spring because um, they don't. They have a lot of reps to go around. They're changing the running game completely without Jaden Daniels, who's going to be a lot more put on these running backs. Um, but they already he already said they want to be careful with Josh Williams just because of some wear and tear and maybe tendonitis in his knee. Uh, they don't want to you know waste him now and you know not have him available in the fall. And then Caleb, you just don't want to overload him. So. Um, they're going to have to really be careful with that position group. Yeah. And then I think maybe we'll find out throughout the course of the spring how interested they are in adding someone else. Some of that might hinge on what happens with Trey Holly. He's Wilson Alexander, LSU beat writer from The Advocate on Twitter at WH Alexander underscore. Wilson, if I asked you, what is the thing you are most interested in seeing this spring? You personally, what what would be at the top of your list? Ooh, um, I guess a couple of things would be maybe how things shake out at wide receiver. Just seeing okay. those new guys, C.J. Daniels, Xavier Thomas is certainly up there. Um, Ellis has got to replace a ton of production at receiver. So are those two guys capable of slotting right in and being instant impact players and getting more out of Kyron Lacey and some of these younger guys? I think that's going to be interesting. Uh, the competition at corner uh, will certainly be up there. Um, and then probably just, you know, how – the you know things obviously now with Harold playing inside that'll be something uh, as well and then probably just what do we see out of these new coaches you know what can we start to glean from them because um, that's going to be crucial especially on the defensive side so I think those are probably maybe be my top four or five kind of things it all gets started on Tuesday out on the Ponderosa make sure you're following him on Twitter read stuff over at the Advocate he's Wilson Alexander thanks man appreciate it as always. Thanks, Matt. Have a great rest of your day. You do the same. It's after further review. We're brought to you by our friends over at South Point Volkswagen Airline just north of Highland or SouthPointVW.com. SouthPointVW.com. was at South Point this weekend, as a matter of fact. Bringing in uh, the vehicle. A little standard maintenance over there. Hey, check them out, man. Airline just north of Highland or SouthPointVW.com at SouthPointVW.com. If you're thinking about buying a vehicle, man, there's just nobody better. Got to see Brad over there. Got to see Kerry Manuel, the certified pre-owned manager this weekend as well. Look, even if you're looking for a pre-owned vehicle that's not a Volkswagen, check out South Point. I tell you all the time, because they move more inventory than anybody else, people come trade in their old vehicles. So when you check out the certified pre-owned inventory, there's all different makes and models. And as I say every day, when you go to the website and you, you hit that, um, you, you hit the the used inventory, and you search, you're going to see pictures of the actual vehicle on the lot, not just like a stock photo, a factory photo. Yes, they got plenty of certified pre-owned Volkswagens, but all different makes and models. So check them out uh, online at southpointvw.com. That's southpointvw.com. I mean, there's a 2017 Honda CRV, a 2018 GMC Yukon Denali, 2014 to Toyota Highlander. So I tell you all the time, man, not just Volkswagens. If you're looking for certified pre-owned, all makes and models, make sure. You chop, stop by and see our friends at South Point Volkswagen. SouthPointVW.com. South Point Volkswagen, what's your direction? All right, y'all. Uh, it's after further review. Thanks to Wilson Alexander for joining us. It, doesn't it? Someone asked me this morning. Uh, I was doing morning scone, and someone asked me this morning. They said, hey, um, are, are you surprised that like a lot of the, the way-too-early projections don't have LSU in the playoff? And, and I said, no, because, I mean, of course, we, we see th things through purple and gold. You know, lens all the time, but I always, I always, 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 if you listen to the show for any length of time, you've heard me say this every single year. I'm consistent with this. When I'm in a at preseason, I look at a team and I try to make a projection. I say who has the fewest questions against the most manageable schedule. That's always my, my personal gauge. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. just what I do. I say, who's got the fewest questions against the most manageable schedule. That's why like a lot of people are going to be high on Ole Miss this year. They return a ton. They've added a ton via the portal, and they got a really easy schedule. That's so. Yes, I would favor them this year. Look at LSU. You know, we talked to Wilson, and man, we talked for ten minutes before I even got to replacing the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback. And I didn't even ask about replacing two thousand yard receivers that could be first round draft picks. So LSU's got a ton of questions. They have talent. They got great coaches, and I think they're going to figure a lot of this out. But they got a lot of questions, and and it's fair to say, 
I'm going to need to get, get some more information about this team before I go ham one way or another. But that'll start tomorrow, Tuesday, with the start of spring practice. Okay, it's after further review. Quick break. Uh, some of the scuttle coming out of the combine is that the Saints could potentially be interested in trading Marshawn Lattimore. I have some thoughts on that. We'll get to it next on AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Darren James and Associates, brokered by LPT Realty. Man, I was checking out uh, Darren's social media early to, earlier today, as a matter of fact. I was scrolling. I saw this picture from Darren. Darren was over... Um, <laughs> He was over in Birmingham speaking at a real estate conference there to realtors in Birmingham. It's just another way that Darren continues to give back, always giving back. 335-7666. That's Darren's cell phone number if you want to give him a shout. 335-7666 or agent225.com. That's agent225.com. I want to talk about Darren James and Associates brokered by LPT Realty. Remember, Darren moves more inventory than anybody. It's on the Wall Street Journal's list of the top 1% of realtors in America. He's number 54 in the country last year. But also, the new partnership with LPT Realty gives you maximum exposure and collaboration and marketing. It's Darren James. Agent225.com. Agent225.com. Think real estate. Think Darren James. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is number one, the only real chance you're going to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like HUDCO, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's going to offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to, we're not looking to make a fortune off Fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor yeah. at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof. You're only paying your deductible. Let's sit down and talk about the Fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a Fortified certificate for your deductible, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we're rocking and rolling. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. I've heard that one a couple times. A couple thousand times. I mean, yeah, it's not a couple thousand. That's not true. But yeah, I mean, it's on a rotator. 
it's gonna come back around every now and then. You don't think I've heard this a couple thousand times? No. All right, hang on. Let's do some math, Muse. Okay. Neither of our strong suits, <laughs> okay. but we'll give it a go. Five shows a week. Yeah. We have 12 segments in a show. Yeah. We take out the show opens that leaves nine rejoins. Uh, well, Let's go eight because we use the same song at the end of the show every day. Okay. Let's go eight. That's 40. Yeah. That's 40 bumps in a week. Okay. Okay. Times 52 weeks in the year. Get my calculator because you're right. I'm terrible at math. People say I'm a know-it-all. Oh, I just know what I know. I know what I don't know, too. All right, so it's 2,080 rejoins in a year, Muse. Okay. Um, we have to factor in how many songs are in the rotator, and I don't actually know that number. How many? Let's see. AFR just celebrated uh, its 14th birthday on February 17th. Yeah. It was a Sunday. Um, but with respect to, uh, let's just say rejoins... That that rotator, four years? Probably fair, yeah, four years. Okay. So 2,080 times, whoops, 2,080 times four. That's 8,320 rejoins. Mm. You don't think I've heard that one a couple thousand times? And that's conservatively it's saying it's only been four. It's only been four years of the 14. Like, I don't know how long we've had that rotator conservatively saying over 8,000 times we played a rejoin. We, we you don't did. think a, you don't think I've heard that more than a thousand times? I, I now think it's possible. Okay. Uh, I don't remember when we switched over to wide orbit. That's when we got that rotator. So I don't, but I don't remember when that was. Got him. But there's, uh, there's a lot of 2019. rejoins. 2019. Was it 19? 2019. Okay. So that's five, five years. years. Yeah. So we go over. We are not good at math. We go over, um, over 10,000 now. 10,000 spins, It's Muse. possible. <clears throat> I know what I know, dog. But you know what? I know I need the sheet of paper that I just did math on the back of it. Uh, Muse, how was, uh, how was Houston, Muse? Did you have Man, a good time? I did. Houston, Houston was great. It's... Everybody was trolling you on Twitter. Alondra wanted me to do the Simba cam with you. That was Cobble that wanted you to do this. Uh, oh, and then Alondra, and Alondra replied to it. Yeah. Replied to it, yeah. Cobble over here throwing out strays. How about it? Just in the in the middle of the Texas game, but yeah, man, yeah. Houston is great. Got to meet a lot of uh, a lot of great people who follow Moose with the box. It was it was a good week. Good. Muse drove back last night. Oof. Why didn't we get a live yesterday after the game? A live Muse at the box after the game, brother. When they went up ten to three in the eighth, I left. I was you like, I'm you going done home. It, you could have done it from the car. There's no shame in that. Uh, I know. I, well, I've done, I've done I, morning scone plenty of times. Just my my focus was okay. Let's get back, get this thing recorded, mm, and go to bed, mm. which didn't happen until two a.m. So, not a fan. Muse wanted a live there. Was waiting for it. Alondra also called you a, a, a moose in the wild. Yeah, a yeah. Moose in the wild. If you had pictures or videos of, of Muse at the ballpark this weekend, chugging beers, send them our way. We'd love to use those on our station socials and whatnot. Yeah. By the way, you didn't do a single. What, what before you left on Friday? What did what did I ask you to do? That's not true. What did you do? What did I ask you to do? Do some Instagram stories. Instagram stories on the ESPN Instagram. Yes. How many Instagram stories do you do on the ESPN Instagram? I mean, li myself, li none. Literally zero. But Polly, what was the one thing? I, I mean, literally. The, I mean, I'm walking down the hall right Friday. Going to the elevator. The the literally thing. the last. Muse, enjoy the weekend. And hey, make sure you do some Instagram stories on ESPN's Instagram. Literally the last thing I said to it. Yes. How many did we that. get? How many did we get? That would be zero. Zero. I was part of the one that Alondra posted. No. That's got, yes, partial credit. No, zero credit. Alondra gets the credit for doing that. Muse, I'll tell you what, this guy. And people wonder, like, why why we throw strays at you in December camp? Because of stuff like that, Muse. Well, and because I'm just not a very big person. But, That's I mean, true well. th that helps. Okay. Um, the um, the Combine was this weekend. Uh, Chris Trapasso is going to be here in about 40 minutes, 35 minutes from right now. We'll look forward to that. Um, CBS Sports Draft Analyst will ask him his takeaways from the Combine, et cetera. Um, Jeremy Fowler over at ESPN, after the Combine, had a little write-up 
where he notes that um, there are several teams that believe Saints cornerback Marshawn Lattimore, whose base salary he notes is a paltry $1.2 million due to restructure, is available via a trade. Okay. Um, first of all, here was Dennis Allen at the Combine this weekend on where things stand with Marshawn Lattimore. Lattimore's on our football team. He's a good football player. He's been a good football player for us. And so, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of things that happen, you know, throughout the offseason. But, um, but, you know, Lat's a, Lat's a big part of our team right now. Lat's a big part of our team right now. Can you be less, can you be more nondescript than that? A lot of things happen. Lat's a big part of our team right now. It's an offseason. Like, in, in no way. Yeah, would you just hear from Dennis Allen? Suggest that Marshawn Lattimore is absolutely going to be back with with the tie, with uh, the Saints next year. Like, <laughs> I mean, if you're Marshawn Lattimore, you're almost like changing your cell phone number, new area code, whatever that's going to be. Um, okay, first, 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 should the Saints trade Marshawn Lattimore? Most importantly, I got to note Marshawn Lattimore is without question the best cornerback in the history of the New Orleans Saints organization, period. There is, there is no other name worth mentioning. I, you could start the next tier. Jabari Greer, a, a lot of guys that played in that Super Bowl era. You can go back. I, I, I don't know. The, the Saints stunk for a long time. It's hard to find really good names. Um. I mean, again, like everything is popping in my mind is like Mike McKenzie, Tracy Porter. We ain't gonna mention Jason David. I got a lot of those in my mind. Um, I got Alex Molden in my mind that make you shudder. Lattimore is the best cornerback in Saints history, and elite cornerbacks are tough to replace and tough to find, as evidenced by the fact that this is the first one the Saints drafted in their history. So. When you talk about the most important positions in the NFL, quarterback and the people who affect quarterbacks, the left tackle that protects them, the defensive end that tries to crush them, and then, yes, cornerbacks that are defending against the quarterback's passes. So cornerback is a super premium position. It's hard to find an elite when you have one in Lattimore. Yes, he has missed 17 games over the past two years. He has essentially missed a full season over the past two years. That's devastating. You need the best... Ability is availability. You need him on the field. But the Saints are not close to winning a championship. This is my opinion. Okay, The Saints are not close to winning a championship. And Marshawn Lattimore isn't the piece that gets you over the hump. So any offer should be considered. Yeah, I'll entertain an offer. Like, there's times where there's players you have that you're not even considering. Like, when Drew Brees was leading the Saints, there is nothing that you could offer that would even allow us to c contemplate a trade. But there are very few players in any league that have that stature. Marshall Lattimore is not one of those guys. So if the right offer comes, yeah, I'll understand an offer. Here's the problem. I don't know what you can get for Lattimore. The best comp in recent memory was when Miami traded Jalen Ramsey to the Rams. And they traded Jalen Ramsey for like, a pack of big league chew and some cash. Like that was, I, I mean, they traded Jalen, Miami traded Jalen Ramsey for tight end Hunter Long and a third round pick. I mean, you going to tell me you would trade Marshawn Lattimore for the equivalent of Hunter Long and a third round pick? Because I wouldn't. I'll keep my elite level cornerback and find other ways to develop assets. Now, the other part of this is Lattimore's contract, where for this year, of course, they restructured him. So his, his cap hit this year is 14.6. The dead cap number is 31.7 million. So, look, they're not going to cut him, but you know, the possibility of a post-June uh, 1st trade designation or you know, could help you save some of that dead cap money. You know, you'd save almost $4 million bucks. So... There's ways that that you could make it work and you could kick more money into future years and all that sort of stuff, which they do. Uh, but it's hard to imagine 
the Saints parting ways with Lattimore this year unless if the right number comes along. I'm just not going to give away an elite player at a premium position because you can't easily replace him. The cap hit sucks after the restructure, which I just mentioned. You know, you're talking about a $31 million dead cap number, which you could drop a little bit if you you know, if you know, designate post-June 1st trade. But even still, Lattimore is on your books through 2028 financially because of your restructure. It's hard to justify giving away an elite player at a premium position for virtually nothing and still having him financially leveraged against your cap through 2028. I, I don't get it. Like, if someone came and wanted to dump a first-round pick in your lap, okay, I'm I'm interested. Aside from that, I I don't know how or why this would make sense. I'm open to to I'm open to hearing whatever you got to say, but I'm just not giving dude away for some sunflower seeds and two tickets to the opera. It is I mean I need I don't, I'm not giving them away for sunflower seeds and two floor seats to Taylor Swift in the dome. Have you caught the price on those, by the way? The get-in price for Taylor Swift in the dome is like a gur. You got to drop a stack. thousand bucks just to get in. You want to sit in the upper, le- upper, upper level? thousand bucks to get in. Whew. Lattimore can afford good seats, though, by the way. He had a really good contract. Five years, $97 million. He can afford it. He can yeah. sit, yeah. Multiple. He can afford yeah. a lot of He could probably go on the stage if he wants. He could be one of the backup dancers. Oh, okay. That'd be interesting. I don't want to see that, actually. No, I'm good. I'd be interested. See, see. You think Lat's got some moves? Lat. He's a, he's a big part of the team. He could have some good moves. Lat's a big part of our team right, right now. Right now. Excuse me. Yes, right now. Uh, a lot of people are asking about um, 100.3 ESPN New Orleans. Do we have an update there? Can you ask Cade to get an update? I, I do, I do not. not I, I, we're working on okay. that still. I, okay. I do not have a, a concrete update. For some reason, not, we're not. We should be. I don't know why we're not. Uh, but we're on air, and I, I'm sure Cade's working. I, I do not know why we're not on air in New Orleans. We're working on it. You can always stream us if you can't get us live uh, on Terrestrial Radio on on uh, on our app or on the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. Okay, it's after further review. Quick break. Muse have Tigers and the Pros next. AFR. Brought to you by Glow Resources, G L O, GlowResources.com. They are complete employer solutions, Glow Resources and GlowResources.com. There, I was chatting earlier today with the Glow team, and uh, they are uh, knocking around the idea of a pretty significant uh, cash payment to their most engaged followers on social. I would highly rec. Let me just say, I would highly recommend without spilling the bean. Nope. Okay. Well, never mind. Um, they're they're doing it. Uh, I'm seeing this post right now from Jareth. They're gonna give away a thousand dollars a month at Glow Resources to their most engaged follower. Uh, you can go. Jareth Nakan has a video up on their social media right now. If you want to go check it out, he explains. But you can get a thousand bucks a month. <laughs> Over at Glow Resources. It's so crazy. Go follow them on social media. GLO, GlowResources.com. There it is. The extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further. Like vans customized for work or play. With safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is number one, the only real chance you're going to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like Hudco, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's going to offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to we're not looking to make a fortune off fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor yeah. at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof. You're only paying your deductible. Let's sit down and talk about the fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a fortified certificate 
for your deductible, essentially. And I think we're rocking and rolling. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company, located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local, not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows, Doors, Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Wrapping up hour number two, Muso has Tigers in the Pros. Tigers in the Pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. All right, let's start. Excuse me. Let's start with Paul Skeen's shove day because uh, that was today over there in spring training. Skeen's comes out of the bullpen uh, today for the Pirates. Two innings, did give up a run on three hits. It was a solo homer that he gave up, but punched out three. Uh, two on the slider, one on the fastball. One of the punch outs was former Mississippi State Bulldog Jake Mangum. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss on, uh, the, on the slider. So, uh, look, Skeen's is rolling along. ERA of three. Doing well. I mean, how long do you think it takes for him to get the call up this year? It's it's got to happen. Um. So, I candidly, I have no idea what the Pirates have in their organization. Fair. So that's probably a big part of it. Um, and it also depends: do they want him in their rotation, or are they willing to use him as a bullpen piece? Because if they want him in the bullpen, like. Now. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Just put him out. I mean, there's going to be a time where you, hey, give me the righty who's going to come throw 100 and give me an out. Because um, it's a better option than anybody else you have in that role. But if you want to gradually scale him up, then um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I'll check this. Okay. I think Strasburg made his debut in July. That's that what I was kind of thinking was July. It might have been a. It'd been August. Um, let me look it up, but I think that's a good con- If they're going to make him a starter, you work him through, and then sometime in the summer you got him, you got him there for a potential postseason run if they make it. I was thinking All Star break would be a great time uh, to, to kind of ease him in if they wanted Let's see. to. Strasburg made his debut. Um, Jake Fraley's off to a great start uh, with the Reds in spring training, hitting 273, although today did wear the collar 0 for 2, but he drew a walk and came around to score. June 8th. Of 2010. For the Strasburg? Next. Strasburg, June 8th. All right, that's aggressive. Uh, but, I mean, it worked. He was pretty good. I watched the game. I remember watching it on MLB Network. Um, and it was electric. Yeah, I mean, well, that that was the comp all of last year for, for Skeens. It was the, the best college arm since, since Steven Strasburg. So, we'll see if they can really follow lockstep. Uh, Cam Sanders came out of the pen for a short outing today for the Cubs, but he dominated. Two-thirds shutout with a punch out. So, he's doing great. Speaking of guys who need to call up. Strasburg, no walks, 14 strikeouts in his debut. <laughs> it was so fun to watch. 
That's ridiculous. Oh, there's a really good Cam Sanders video as well that our guy Scott Sanders, the Sandy Man, uh, posted from Cam uh, Spring Training. I'll find it. All right. While you find that, I'll Sorry. give you an update on Joe Burrow. Uh, Burrow's talking recovery, obviously, from his wrist injury. Gave an interview to ESPN on Sunday, and they asked him, he says, uh, middle of May is when he's expecting to be cleared for full contact and everything. Burrow did also say that he can basically lift normally now, so he's excited about that. So uh, you're looking for Joe Burrow to be fully back for the Bengals uh, in well in time for training camp, which is great news. Here it is. Well, I don't know if you want to grab it. Wait, here it is. Cam Sanders. Boop. Dots, Dots a fastball. <laughs> Dots so a fast. Paint. I mean. Yeah. He's looking. getting his call up this year. Cam Sanders it, will be next. Please. I mean, good yeah. Lord. It should have happened already. But he'll It get really it. should have happened already. Uh, uh, Nas Reed uh, didn't stop the uh, statue from the points. But uh, he did grab 11 boards uh, last night. Uh, that'll wrap up Tigers and Press. Presented by Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com. Michelle.com. Tell you all the time, if you weigh or measure something, go see our friends at Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Check them out on LinkedIn. They do a great job if you're on LinkedIn. Follow their content there because they'll post customer testimonials, examples of jobs they do when they're out at different shows. Like they were at the, um, the this was the uh, Mid-South Farm and Gin Show in Memphis, Tennessee, where they were uh, this past week. So, yeah, weekend. So get by and see our friends at Michelle Weighing and Measurement. 30 offices across 11 different states. You're never far. Michelle Weighing and Measurement. You weigh or measure something. They sell, service, rent the products you use to weigh and measure. ISO 17025 accreditation. It is Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com. Michelle.com. Okay, y'all. Uh, David DeLucci talking some baseball next. Mm-hmm. AFR. AFR. IU Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23-1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. 
visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Center. I'm Christine Lisi. Quarterback Russell Wilson has taken his last snap for the Broncos. The team will release him after the start of the new league year, March 13th. Wilson will be a free agent for the first time ever, and Pittsburgh would be a great landing spot for him, believes our Harry Douglas. You have two solid running backs. You have two solid receivers. Uh, you have a solid tight end and another young one that could be really good. Pittsburgh, if they're able to address some more offensive line situations, mm -hmm. uh, I think they can be a really, really good team next season, right? And I, and I think when you look at any of these teams that could potentially get them, uh, you, you only go, you think about one year getting Russell Wilson. Harry of Freddie and Harry. With Wilson's release, Denver will take an $85 million dead money hit over the next two seasons. After 13 NFL seasons all spent with the Eagles, star center Jason Kelsey announced his retirement. He leaves with one Super Bowl championship, six All-Pro nods, and a Hall of fame worthy career nhl slumping devils fired coach lindy roff and named assistant travis green his interim replacement new jersey's lost five of its last seven games to fall further out of playoff contention espn radio is presented by progressive insurance at progressive they're making things even easier they'll help you bundle your home and car insurance together so you can save on both learn more at progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Relief Windows. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neal. They're chanting Paul O'Neal's name. Mm, you show. And Mr. Toby Tom Play. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you're driving home with us. Talk some NFL uh, combine. Big takeaways. Our buddy Chris Trapasso, draft analyst from CBS Sports. He'll be here in 15 minutes from right now. Uh, excited to do this every Monday throughout the baseball season. We'll recap the SEC weekend that was. Our buddy David DeLucci is good enough to join us. Luch, how are you, man? I'm doing great. Trying to navigate around this weather and the Baton Rouge traffic on my way to a volleyball game, baby. Yeah, man. The um, <laughs> the Baton Rouge traffic and the weather got me this morning. I was late for carpool dropping off Drew, and it, it set off a domino effect of a lot of bad things. But we got it all on the straight and narrow now, man. So drive safe, Luch. We appreciate you for joining us. Hey, um, LSU sweeps through the weekend there in Houston. Single biggest takeaway from LSU's three wins in Houston. I think we found an ace, right? I mean, Luke Holman is a, a guy that we've talked about has the potential to be a game one starter and uh, it's just been so efficient early on in this season. He's a pitcher. It's not going to light up the radar screen, but he's going to control both sides of the plate and locate four pitches. And I, I just think that he's been been really the, the base of the pitching staff. And then I love Gates' jump, man. 
Uh, every single outing, he gets better and better. His pitch count is getting higher and higher, coming back from Tommy John. And there's your one-two punch, and it takes a off of Thatcher Hurd. So for me, you're starting to see your pitching rotation unfold, and it looks really good. Is Do you think that Holman, without the electric stuff, is that sustainable through SEC play as a Friday night guy? It's it's not going to be what you, what you expect out of a Friday night ace. Remember, a couple of years ago, Ole Miss had Hunter Elliott. He was a lefty that threw about 85 miles an hour. Yeah. So I have seen aces uh, with less velocity than Holman does. The fact that he can hit you with four different pitches at any point of the count, I think that makes up for the lack of velo. His pitchability is is really uh, what he relies on so much. So he, he's going to put the ball in the strike zone. He lets the defense play behind him, and it's, it's a good tone setter. And he'll also go deep into the game. So it's going to reserve your bullpen in case your game two or game three starter doesn't go four innings. David Alucci is with us. Um, offensively, anything standing out right now from this LSU team, which of course just mashed the baseball a year ago, but is replacing really you know six or seven of its top bats? It's different. It's not what LSU fans are used to. And, and, and last year, the offense was so high-powered from one to nine. And, and I can't remember how many games that they scored double-digit runs. It was like 30 games last year that they scored double-digit runs. This offense will be better as the season goes on. I credit them for finding ways to win and, and winning close games. I think it's fantastic. It's going to do a lot for chemistry. It's going to do a lot for morale. But as the season goes on, we're starting to see guys loosen up and get their timing down. You'll have some guys that separate themselves and have more ability to hit the long ball. But we, we were questioning if anybody was going to back up Tommy White. You've got Hay, Hayden Travinsky and Jared Jones that are the big sluggers in that lineup. And that's plenty enough if the other guys can get clutch hits throughout the season. But they're not anywhere near where they're going to be in May and June. Luch, we saw Vandy. Uh, Vandy was there in Houston as well, and it's another preseason top ten team that they took it on the chin against ULL on Friday and have a comeback win. Um, what um, what do you make of Vandy, if anything, so far early in the season? So it, it, Vandy is an interesting team that the past two seasons has really relied on their pitching, and just when you count them out offensively, they do something like they did over the weekend and they come back from four runs, I believe, in the fourth, I think is what it was, or seven runs in the fourth, and they score 11 unanswered runs, which is uncharacteristic of, of the Vanderbilt offense that you've seen uh, in the past couple of years. They score runs when they need to, and they've got pitching, especially in the bullpen, that if they get a lead late, they can hold that lead. 3-0 uh, and on the weekend against some, some quality teams is really impressive, but as you get into SEC play, Vanderbilt is going to have to hit the home run if they're going to compete, especially in the East with teams like Florida and Tennessee that can hit the ball out of the ballpark at will. Yeah, we saw some of these um, these classics this weekend. Some interesting series, right? South Carolina played Clemson. Florida played Miami. We saw A&M go up and play in uh, in the, the, the classic of Dallas. Any, um, what stood out most of those sort of marquee, Ole Miss played Iowa, of those marquee uh, series this weekend? What, what were the storylines that jumped out most to you? So the first storyline to me is is Jack Caglione, the two-way player from Florida, who's got tremendous power potential, has a very live arm. He can throw a fastball 98 miles an hour, just has been inconsistent. We saw him at the College World Series last year and his inability to throw strikes. This year he's been much more efficient around the plate. Uh, over the weekend against Miami, which was a big rivalry game, his heart rate would have been through the roof. He was able to throw really well. I think he got 11 strikeouts, uh, something around there. And it was his changeup that was working for him. Obviously, he's going to hit. He hit a couple home runs over the week. But if he can be consistent, he is going to be uh, an extremely high draft pick and very valuable to Florida. A&M is one of two teams uh, that have moved into the top 25 that's undefeated. And it's an A&M team that is pitching about as good as anybody right now. And that's what they lacked last year. A&M's offense is going to get better. It's not exactly where they want it to be. But the pitching staff has just been incredible. And that was a staff that had about a combined seven ERA last year. 
So I would keep an eye on them. It's going to make for a great opening conference weekend with the Aggies. David DeLucci is with us. You can follow him on Twitter at David DeLucci. Um, Luch, wanted to ask you also about um, about the Rebels, man, because I think the the state of Mississippi is well, maybe both state and Ole Miss. It's so interesting because obviously we know that state and Ole Miss went back to back national champions, and boy, it really feels like Chris Lamonis, if he doesn't see a big improvement this year, he's going to be run out in Starkville. And I, I don't know really what the situation would be there with Mike Bianco uh, if if he has another down year. But through the first couple of weeks, thoughts on, on the Bulldogs and the Rebels? Yeah, so actually State, in my opinion, is, is pitching better this year than they were last year. That was their downfall was walks and errors uh, really held back Mississippi State. Their offense was okay. This year, offense not so good. Pitching staff, definitely better. But I think State has a lot to overcome to be competitive. Ole Miss is very similar on their end. A lot of transfers, 23 new faces this year. They went into the portal and got some big bats. Those bats hadn't been hitting real well right now. Their pitching staff, they lost two key arms uh, right before opening day. So uh, a depleted pitching staff, they're going to have to find pitching. But, man, look, Matt, if you lose your foothold in the SEC – it's very difficult to get it back. We talked about Auburn being so good. Alabama is really good this year. And I'm just afraid that Ole Miss and Mississippi State, if they don't get hot and catch lightning in a bottle, they're going to be dragging the, the bottom of the SEC West again. You can look at the standings right now. As Luch mentioned, A&M undefeated at 11-0. and But at the bottom, State 8-4, and Ole Miss 8-5 and here to start the, uh, the non-conference portion of play. Of course, LSU opens up conference play in Starkville against Mississippi State. David DeLucci is going to join us every single Monday here on AFR during baseball season. We'll talk some uh, some ball after the weekend that was. Luch, we appreciate it as always, man. We'll do it again next week. Thanks for having me. Have okay. a great day. You do the same. Be well. David DeLucci, going to going to be dad. Going to go to volleyball match right now. We appreciate him joining us for a couple of minutes here. All right, it's after further review. Uh, hey, real quick, of course, there was a lot of rain today. If you have issues with the roof, you know, we'd love to help you out, commercial or residential. Give us a shout, 364-1007, 364-1007. Encourage you to call us, 364-1007. Um, commercial, residential, repairs, replacements, give us a shout, 364-1007. Love to help you out with any roofing uh, issues that you may be having, especially, look, we say it all the time, whenever, when rain starts to fall, it's when you know you got a roof issue. If you got a roof issue, uh, ring to the office, cell phones, 364-1007, 364-1007. All right, it's after further review. Um, well, I got a break. The Combine was this past weekend, as you well know. We talked a bit uh, last hour about the day that Brian Thomas had. It really seems like he solidified himself as a first-round draft pick. I'll ask Chris Trapasso if he agrees with that when we come back next. Also, um, I want to take a look not only at the LSU guys, but some of the big standouts. Like We know the storyline. Xavier Worthy ran 4 one Okay, well, who else helped themselves, hurt themselves at the Combine? We'll get into all that with our buddy Chris Trapasso from CBS Sports when we come back. Glad you're here. It's AFR. AFR. Well, y'all, high today, 75 degrees, even with showers. So you know what that means. It is about that time of year where we start cranking on the ACs round the clock. Make sure you call our friends at River City's One Hour Air if you have any issue with your AC. And it's also time, maybe most importantly, for the preseason AC tune-up. Call River City's One Hour Air. You know the drill. They'll come out, get you tuned up, tip-top shape. For the coming warm weather months where that AC is going to be really taxed, run around the clock. Uh, Bria Rito sent this five-star review. Always satisfied with the service. Kevin was knowledgeable and down to earth. Glad to have welcomed him into our home. All issues were addressed and fixed with ease. Another five-star review from River City's One Hour Air. There's a reason they got more than double the amount of five-star reviews of their next closest competitor. Look for the big yellow vans and trucks with a giant clock on the side. Mention the Moscona Special. Save 25 bucks off any system repair. At River City's One Hour Air, 752-0001. There it is, the extra mile. On the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further. Like vans customized for work or play. With safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. 
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is number one, the only real chance you're gonna to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like HUDCO, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's gonna offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to we're not looking to make a fortune off fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor yeah. at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof. You're only paying your deductible. <laughs> let's sit down and talk about the fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a fortified certificate for your deductible, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we're rocking and rolling. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 2 After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Combine was this weekend in Indy. Our buddy Chris Trapasso, CBS Sports Draft Analyst, is going to have to join us to do a little recap. Chris, how are you, man? Hey, thanks, Matt. Hey, um, a lot of the conversation here has been around Brian Thomas running a 4-3-3. How much did he help himself, if at all? Uh, being as big as he was running that fast of a 40, he definitely helped himself. I mean, before the combine, he was a consensus first rounder, but I think now it won't be surprising if he is a top 20 pick or there are multiple teams vying to trade up to get him. I mean, he looked fast on film, but there was so much attention on Malik's neighbors, obviously. We didn't really get to see anything from Jaden Daniels, who's the marquee LSU prospect in this draft, but there's certainly guys like let's use Keon Coleman from Florida State, another big body wide receiver, six foot three, who ran four six one. So the fact that Brian Thomas looks fast on film, and then you get the double check where he runs as fast as he did in the low four threes, he did help himself. Maybe not considerably. He didn't test himself into the top ten and he wasn't someone that was a day two prospect previously but everyone expected him to be fast and he was probably even a little faster than most of us thought. Did uh, Jaden Daniels or Malik Neighbors do themselves a disservice by not getting measured or working out? I think so. I think the fact that Jaden Daniels was after Caleb Williams in terms of deciding that he was not going to work out. If I was Jaden Daniels, I would have thought, all right, I'm going to let everything go by what Caleb Williams does because he's the, ch the, the chalk, the penciled in number one overall pick. And right when Caleb Williams said, I'm not going to work out, and then we later in the week got Drake Mays not going to work out, the other kind of member of the big three at the quarterback spot, if I'm Jaden Daniels, like I get it from his perspective to say, I'm the Heisman winner. I made a ton of bucket throws down the field. I was you know, scoring 50-yard touchdowns in the SEC. Like 
I'm not blaming him, but if I were him, I would have said, hey, look, like this is an opportunity for me to be able to run and not necessarily have anyone to compare to at the top. And I think, I'm sure Jane Daniels and his agent and his party, his, his whole group would say that he would have probably run pretty fast and tested very well. And had he even, let's say, disappointed a little bit, it wouldn't have sunk his stock so much that he wouldn't have been considered one of the premier elite prospects at a valuable position in this year's draft class. You know, there's one other guy, and Chris Trapasso is our guest. Another LSU guy I wanted to ask you about was Mason Smith, who we thought, mm-hmm. look, we know he's obviously this this physical freak, but the production wasn't there, had the ACL injury, all that stuff. Um, how how did he do, and what do you see as a, as a ceiling for Mason Smith in the draft? Yeah, he is one of the more fascinating defensive linemen in this class. He did test well to have a vertical jump, 31 inches, uh, at his size, at his height, to be able to sink that low and explode that far up in the air indicates that he is a big-time athlete. I totally agree with you, Matt, that the production wasn't there. I know he was a monster recruit. Yeah. Um, it, it certainly did well for him because we've seen a litany of guys that are big recruits. They don't necessarily live up to that potential. And then at the combine, like they kind of almost keep the negative momentum rolling and they don't have a good workout. Mason Smith did have a pretty good workout. His relative athletic score, which a lot of people are, I know as draft analysts and a few people in the league are kind of looking at, it's kind of a score that based on your height, your weight, and everything that you do on a scale of 0 to 10, you want to be obviously closer to 10, um, teams are looking to kind of say, all right, let's just encapsulate this combine workout. His RAS was 8.98. So being as big as he is, that's a pretty good score. I mean, there are certainly guys above him in the nine range, but there will be a team. I think it's probably on day three that will just say mm-hmm. six foot six, over three hundred and ten pounds, long arms. The flashes are there. The consistency is not. But now teams know. Yeah, this is a big time athlete that could play five technique, that can play way outside, that can play nose tackle anywhere up front, and there will be a defensive line coach that's banging the table in the fourth or the fifth round for Mason Smith being like, I saw what this kid was at 18 years old and what he showed at the combine kind of solidifies that he is an NFL caliber athlete along the defensive line. Oh, Chris, the saints love them a relative athletic score. I mean, that's how saints landed Peyton Turner and and a lot of uh, 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 Davenport. Oh yeah, man. That rel- we're familiar here with the relative athletic score. Um, uh, Chris Trapasso is with us here. He's on Twitter at Chris Trapasso. Y'all give him a follow. CBS Sports Draft Analyst. Um, outside of the LSU guys, I think the the thing everybody's talking about, of course, Xavier uh, Worthy running the, the 4-2-1. Um, what, what were your biggest uh, takeaways or who you thought were big risers at the Combine? How about the offensive tackle class? I, I always go back to, I, I guess that. now, in the last couple of weeks, the last couple of days, this offensive tackle class reminds me of the 2020 group that had Andrew Thomas in the first round, Makai Becton, who because of weight never really worked out, but Jedrick Wills, who's been a solid player, went healthy in Cleveland. Of course, the headliner, Tristan Wirfs, who stepped right in, was the key piece, that one final missing piece that a lot of contenders think that they're one guy away. He was that guy for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, this class with Talese Buanga from Oregon State, um, Joe Alt from Notre Dame, they tested well. Troy uh, Fatanu from Washington looked like a tight end out there. I, I think he needs to get a lot stronger, mm. but the mobility was off, was off the charts. It was through the roof, on-field drills. Um, it's just J.C. Latham, Amarius Mims did some freaky stuff at like 6'8", 340. It's like, I don't want to show my age here. I'm, I'm almost 36 years old, and it's just like some of the stuff these guys are doing, the 9'3 broad jump for Amarius Mims, like I said, at 6'8", 340. <laughs> Joe Alt, one of the best three cones. I'm like, guys that big, human beings that big should not be doing what these guys are doing. I think we have very close to – the 2020 draft class with the offensive tackle. It's all about receivers and quarterbacks, but don't be surprised if we see six or seven offensive tackles 
in the first round. That's uh, I mean, so, Chris. I would love to see the Saints at fourteen go offensive tackle because it feels like there's going to be mm-hmm. great value. What What do you think about the Saints and and what relative value might be there based on what they need at fourteen? Yeah, even at fourteen. I mean, from what I just said, like even if there are already two or three offensive tackles off the board when they go on the clock, if they're picking a J.C. Latham who was over 340 pounds, six, seven tested pretty well, like an on-field workout and was a multi-year starter at multiple positions at mm. Alabama in the SEC, you could do a lot worse than that. Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to peg who it would be, yeah. but I, I kind of agree with you that offensive linemen, that's a position that you seem to get a pretty good return on value for that spot. It's like, it's not like a lot of other positions, you know, of course, outside of quarterback, but if you hit on a Ryan Ramchek, then you're like set at a position for a decade. And that's really not the case for any other spot on the field outside of the quarterback spot. Do you think one follow up on Latham? I saw where he said he wants to play left tackle in the NFL. Is he an NFL left tackle? Um, I have a few questions about that, um, and and I'm not trying to totally fault him for saying that. Sure. But really, in today's NFL, and this is a thing, like it's, it's constantly evolving. Like not just uh, how much certain players are getting paid and how draft philosophies are, but like the size of linebackers, the size of receivers. We're seeing smaller guys. A lot of people that I talked to in Indy this week about the offensive tech class, that was one of the most buzzed about positions, was – truly it has become for every team left and right tackle are interchangeable not that you can move your left tackle to right tackle but you can't just throw out a bottom of the roster player at right tackle like you could 10 years ago and get away with it because smart teams and almost every team are going to put tj watt over there they're going to put khalil mack over there they're going to put nick bosa on the left side of their defensive line to match up with that right tackle so i think jc latham is your classic power right tackle but that doesn't mean that I think he's a way lesser blocker than someone who is going to be a left tackle I certainly remember growing up and it was like oh the left tackle is the guy he's your Trent Williams he's your Jonathan Ogden type player Tony Baselli but I think JC Latham even if he is only a right tackle and, and is not as quite as athletically gifted as maybe a Joe Alt or Olu Fashanu if he's a good right tackle Whatever team that picks him, if that's the Saints, will be very happy. And I think the Saints know that from picking Ryan Ramchuk. Chris Trapasso, man, I could talk to you forever. Uh, I got like a million things I'd love to talk about. <laughs> let me just get, let me just try to get maybe one more. Um, sure. Someone you went into Indy th- 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 with a higher grade than you had coming out. Who who didn't perform well in your book? Well, just because I mean, there's a few, but off the top of my head, Keon Coleman from Florida State, like I. I didn't have him quite as high as everyone else, but I thought, you know, he's a big body guy. I don't expect him to run crazy fast, but four six one is not going to be in the first round. It might not be in the second round. Oh, wow. And it's, it's kind of like in this draft class, it's so stacked at the wide receiver spot. You can list off guys like Lad McConkey and Malik Washington from uh, Virginia, who had a 42 and a half inch vertical that's, this kind of stocky, like smaller version of Debo Samuel, so difficult, led the NCAA in missed tackles force this past season. Like, you got to find room for him. A.D. Mitchell from Texas, both Texas receivers, of course, both LSU receivers. There's just so many that he's someone that he didn't need to run 4-3-3 or 4-3-4, but just don't blow up your stock at the 4-6-1. Keon Coleman, to me, the transfer from Michigan State who played at Florida State, is someone that I think, again, maybe he could be a good wide receiver eventually, but if we're just looking at where he's going to be picked, he probably hurt his stock more than anyone else. He is Chris Trapasso. Follow him on Twitter at Chris Trapasso. Of course, CBSSports.com draft analyst. Always good enough to give us a couple of minutes. Man, really appreciate it. Great to chat as always. Thank you. Yes, let's do this again. Thanks. Will do, man. Um, great insight. How about that about Keon Coleman? But see, that's another thing about Brian Thomas, where, like, where we went in saying – Brian Thomas, you felt like had a a great opportunity um, to solidify himself, and you know I think the way we phrased it was he would have the most to lose because it it's not that we thought he wouldn't perform well. It's just it was such a stacked class. There probably isn't room to go up because of the top three, but man, with so many guys 
that are talented receivers, you could go the other way. Keon Coleman's a great example of that. So Keon Coleman, a lot of people had it mocked in round one. He goes, runs 4-6-1, and you hear Chris say, man, that's probably the most disappointing guy at the whole combine. So, uh, interesting. Hey, I am thrilled uh, to welcome a new partner here on After Further Review. It is uh, Evermore. Water is water, right? Not when it's Evermore. Um, first of all, Evermore is just great tasting all natural water. I would challenge you if you drink bottled water, go s grab a bottle of Evermore and do a side by side with your tap or any other bottle that you might drink. But what's amazing is this is natural artesian water from a well in Louisiana. I went to their plant last week. It's incredible. And it never touches air until you uncap it and drink it. They, they drill down into the well. It's piped out into their filtration system, into the plant. Like it's never exposed to air until you uncap it. So if you're someone who, you know, you want a healthier lifestyle, Evermore. If, you know, you, you eat healthier. If you're a high-end athlete who wants better hydration, one of their, their national spokespersons is Dak Prescott. So if you're a, an elite-level athlete or a weekend warrior, you just want better hydration, Evermore. Or, you know, you're a parent, you want a healthier option for your kid, Evermore. So at all great local retailers, Rouse's sells a ton of Evermore, but it's at all great local retailers. You can check it out, E-V-A-M-O-R, E-V-A-M-O-R. It's Evermore, natural artesian water. Check it out, it's Evermore. Thrilled to have it. You'll see it here on the set with us every day. Um, appreciate Chris for joining us. Uh, for a couple of minutes there. One other college football note I want to get to when we get back. Um, there was, and continues to be, more and more proposals about an expanded college football playoff. Well, the latest proposal about a 14-team playoff has some coaches irate. I'll tell you why, and I'll react to it next on AFR. AFR. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of 
a cold drink, or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. After further review, presented by Relief Windows, Windows Door Sighting. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. So we know this year the NCAA, I shouldn't say the NCAA, the college football playoff will expand to 12 teams. And they're already talking about 14, which you know. And over the weekend, a source told ESPN that one of the 14-team models that's being considered includes provisions for the SEC and the Big Ten to get three automatic qualifiers each and the only two buys for their conference champions. So, again, in a 14-team playoff, there would be two buys. Only, only two buys. And they're saying... The Big Ten and SEC champion, you get the buys. <laughs> Needless to say, like regardless, regard whoever wins the SEC, whoever wins the Big Ten, you get the buy. Regardless, like Florida State could be undefeated, ranked number one in the country, but nope, the SEC and the Big Ten champions, they get the buys. Needless to say, uh, there are some other coaches around the country not too pleased with that proposal. Uh, TCU Sonny Dykes, quote, automatic first round buys for the Big Ten and SEC is like the NFL saying the Cowboys get a first round buy since they have more fans than the Bengals. How preposterous is that? Hmm, somebody's salty. Uh, Mike Gundy said, quote, a playoff format that guarantees a first round buy to any team, division, or conference before the season starts is unheard of in any sport as far as I'm aware. Hey, Mike. You know what else is unheard of in any sport as far as I'm aware? Having an undefeated team that doesn't even have a chance to play for a championship, sir. College football at its core is unheard of. I don't know how many more times or ways or years I can yell this at you in how many different ways. We all love college football in spite of college football. We love college football because we wrap ourselves in our school colors. We take tremendous pride in our school, the bragging rights, how much it means and is rooted in the fabric of our being. The powers that be for a century have convinced us it's because of intangible, innate foolishness like the most meaningful regular season and sacred bowl games and the sacred regular season and student athletes, all of which is teetotal crap. None of it's real. Everyone's starting to see it now. And it's amazing because these are things I've yelled about forever. I saw one of the national guys today at this graphic. We're headed for Super Leagues. Oh, really? The thing that I've been... One college football. The thing that I've been yelling about here for years. Oh, they're never going to get rid of conferences. Yes, they are. It's coming. As soon as they can figure out how to make it... And I can do, do it right now. Figure out how to make much, enough money with it. Just if they want to do it, they'll get there eventually. 
uh, by the way, I'm not saying that giving the SEC champ and the Big Ten champ a bye is the right thing to do. I'm not saying that. I think that's absurd. I do think that's absurd. However, it's no more or less absurd than having an undefeated team not even have a chance to play for a championship. Mike Gundy also said, this is good too, we need to let the teams decide it on the field and reward those who are most deserving, end quote. Hey, Mike, who's going to determine who is most deserving? Is it going to be the group of yahoos in a hotel ballroom in suburban Dallas that's measuring things such as game control and defensive efficiency metrics? (laughs) You dummy. Don't you understand? This is why we need an expanded playoff to take that out of the hands of the self-important nincompoops at a hotel ballroom in suburban Dallas trying to determine the fate of college football. Yes, it should be determined on the field. But the absurdity of this proposal is no more or less absurd than any of the proposals or any things we deal with the college football right now. Do you realize college football's postseason, in part, is determined by a beautiful sunset? Do you realize that? The Rose Bowl. When they play it, who's going to be in it, all that stuff. Contracts, will we expand, not. The Rose Bowl just wants their Pac-12 Big Ten matchup in that afternoon because of the beautiful sunset. (laughs) The sacred college football. You know what? I think that time they had that... uh, That Rose Bowl with Georgia and Oklahoma in it? That was a pretty good game, wasn't it? Really good game. Playoff game. Didn't have the SEC or the Big Ten or the the Pac-12. Wasn't a traditional Rose Bowl. Still pretty cool. Hey, you remember that time? Hey, you remember that time when Vince Young played that game with Texas against USC and Reggie Bush and Lindell White and Matt Lyon? Remember that game? Hey, do y'all remember that? Muse, do you remember that game? I yeah. very much yeah. remember that game. Paul, do you remember that time? It was Texas against USC. I'm pretty sure those were the teams. Where, when, when, Correct. Wasn't I do that? remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was a good game. Wasn't that a good game? Great game. A lot of people talk about that as like having been a really good game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a Rose Bowl game with USC and Texas played on a Monday night. Well, we're going to protect the sunset and the parade. Like, a parade and a sunset! A parade and a sunset! Dictating college football's postseason. That's what we've lived with forever. I have no hair and I want to pull out what I have left. Listening to these people drone on about how we're ruining college football's regular season. No, we're not. College football has ruined college football. Tell me you're just aching to see LSU play directional state U on November the 23rd. That's what everybody wants, right? Oh, well, what are we going to do? You know, what, what are the group of five teams going to do? They need that money. I don't care. Have a bake sale. I saw Girl Scouts yesterday at the mall selling cookies. Good on them. They're going to make money for their troops. Hey, group of five. Stop spending money you don't have. Go find a way to raise money and stop playing games and things you can't afford. (laughs) They need that money. I don't care. (laughs) Oh, God. It's just so funny to see people reacting now to the, it's the same premise, the same ideology of what we've been screaming about here forever. That would be pretty cool, though, if they just gave the SEC and the Big Ten a buy. But it, what, it, what it tells you, and by the way, um, this, was, this was the source within the playoff, told ESPN, quote, the balance in the room is how to recognize contributions of the Big Ten and the SEC 
while also being fair and collaborative to the collective room. An 18-team Big Ten, a 16-team SEC is 34 teams that make up the, the lion's share of the power in college football, especially now with Texas and Oklahoma in the SEC, USC, Oregon, Washington, UCLA in the Big Ten. Like, what's left? Clemson, Florida State are over there like, man, we're suing y'all to get out of this league. (laughs) They're suing their own league. (laughs) It's so good. Oh, man. Uh, This is a hundred years of lunacy being unwound very quickly, which is so fun to watch, especially when you knew this day was coming. Uh, Okay, it's after further review. We're brought to you by Pure Restoration. Rain today. If you have mold, think you might. Uh, we live in the mold capital of the world, y'all. Uh, it's wet and humid in South Louisiana. If you have mold, think you might. Let our friends at Pure Restoration help. You give them a shout, pure-restoration.com, pure-restoration.com. You get a quote, uh, have them come out, give you a quote. If you need demo and build back services, they can do the whole thing for you. But the great thing is it's a dry fog. It's a patented non-toxic dry fog. So like you just leave your house, they come in, they spray. You don't have to take furniture or pets or plants. Well, I wouldn't leave your pets in there, but you don't have to take anything out. Just they go in, they spray. As soon as the fog dissipates, you're back in free and clear. Mold-free odor, pet odor, cigarette odor, um, urine, whatever it might be. Pure Restoration, they can get rid of all of it. Pure-Restoration.com, Pure-Restoration.com. All right, y'all, glad to have you with us here. We're coming down the home stretch. Uh, one thing left to do, uh, Jimmy will be here for Otter Locks. We're looking forward to that. We'll find out what uh, Jimmy's betting on tonight. Otter has been in Fuego. I think he had a 5 and one day on Saturday. It might have been 6-2. and two. I don't remember exactly, but another uh, banger of a weekend. Jimmy has crushed it with college basketball. We're coming down the stretch here, so... Get on board if you haven't yet. All right, we'll knock out our final break. When we come back, out of locks, don't you move. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by Clegg's Nursery with four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. You know where they are. Seaganeer Airline, LA-16 in Denham, Mid-City on Donmore, and the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. Plants arriving daily at all four Clegg's Nursery locations. Their greenhouses are bursting with blooms. As a matter of fact, at the Segan location, presently they are expanding their greenhouse. It's awesome, man. Go by and see our friends. Of course, you want tomato plants, vegetables. They got Johnny Naylor's garden seed as well over at Clegg's Nursery. Any of the four locations. And remember, 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 it's getting warmer. Uh, it's raining. Your lawn is going to start to come back to life before the weeds sprout. Treat your lawn now. Spray your lawn. They've got the products to use to spray your lawn to prevent weeds from ever popping up. They got it at any of the four Clegg's Nursery locations. Go see them. Buy local. Shop local. Be sure to tell them that Matt sent you in for more than 60 years. It's Clegg's Nursery. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center. Long live you. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is number one, the only real chance you're going to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like HUDCO, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's going to offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to, we're not looking to make a fortune off fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof, you're only paying your deductible. 
let's sit down and talk about the Fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a Fortified certificate for your deductible, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're rocking and rolling. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today. Presented by Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding. Oh yeah, they also do interior shutters. Down the stretch we come. Final segment here on a Monday edition of AFR. One thing left to do. Find out what we're betting on tonight. Time for Otter Locks. Otter Locks. Presented by Lofton Staffing Services. At Lofton, we put people to work. Call us today at 924-0200 or go to lofton.jobs. So we turn to the one and only, the incomparable and often incomprehensible, the Ott Father himself, Jimmy. Otter, how are you? Good, Matt. How about you? Doing awesome, man. Another great weekend uh, on the college basketball front. Congrats. I think, what What did you, was it six and two? I went five and one. Five on and one. Pick. Yeah, on my Friday picks. Um, Greg Waddell had a winning week at um, at uh, three and one. Uh, three and one. Uh, uh, Will Hill went three and two. Bruce went four and three. So, Everybody put in a profitable weekend. You know, as you noticed, Matt, we were in contact over the weekend. Those first lines coming out on Friday, right at they trickle out right in the middle of our show from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Fridays before they move. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, the 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 home teams are getting a a, a lot more uh, a lot more uh, run than usual. I mean, the Alabama went went opened up one and a half, went off four against yeah. Tennessee on Saturday night. I mean, you know. That's significant. I think that was – was that your only – Yeah, that was my only loss. It was yep. the only loss was having Bama. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, it was a great weekend, though, man. Uh, profitable weekend for sure. It's been a great college basketball season. So, we're winding down, though, man. What are we looking at tonight? On the ESPN doubleheader, we actually have uh, an opinion on both. Uh, my favorite pick is the first game, NC State. They're probably out, but they have a, a faint chance to get back into it. But, nonetheless, uh, Duke – my goodness, it was like 40 to 15 at one point in the Virginia game on Saturday. Uh, NC State was more than respectable Saturday against North Carolina, but they've been really tough at home for this year. So, home dog alert is alive and well uh, with NC State for what? I mean, 10 minutes uh, from each other's campus. So, I think NC State, real live dog at home plus the points. All right. They're getting, uh, NC State's getting six and a half. And Otter, honestly, I saw this on your podcast earlier. I saw it earlier today. At six, so I played it at six. It's at six and a half right now. So I'm, I'm sure you can tell everybody buy at the seven. You think I'm okay at six? Uh, yeah, I mean, I like them at I like them better at seven. Well, yeah, well, I guess, but, but I mean, I could, I could cash out and bet it at, and bet it at at seven. Uh, look, you know, Matt. Sometimes, uh, you know, we get caught in a in line movement. You know, sometimes in our favor, sometimes yeah. not. I wouldn't advise doubling up of your original bet or your normal bet. So, I mean, the same thing applies here. The favorite is Duke. Duke is the the, the, the popular team. Yeah. Chalk early dogs late. So yeah. this is a this is another case where the dog gets a little bit more run yeah. uh, later on. Seventy percent of the tickets on Duke tonight. Similar situation as far as the line movement, uh, with Baylor in Texas. And we've been on Baylor in Waco last couple of times. One of our hits on Saturday, even though Kansas star player McCullough did play they still pulled away and did cover the spread, but this number's too high. Um, 
Texas just went to Texas Tech, and there's no way it could be more of a, an imposing environment to play than what Texas Tech Lubbock was uh, on Saturday, I mean, uh, last week, and they blew them out. Texas does pretty good in these tough environments. Man, that's a lot of points. It's gone up from, what, six and a half to now eight. So I'm taking uh, the, the horns uh, plus the points. So in this. did you flip there? Because I was on the podcast earlier, you'd given Baylor. I didn't do a podcast today. We did big, oh, they, the podcast was Baylor for Saturday's game. Mm, I saw something today on uh, on. Oh no uh, no 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 no, no 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 oh, oh no no that is that is a a little angles thing and that's okay. some, I I pick one game on there and somebody else is Got picking it. two, two okay, games. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so t- so the play is Texas tonight. It's at seven F's. So we're buying Texas Correct. to eight. Correct. I'm glad you asked okay. that because somebody else was confused with that too. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. so we're taking Texas, buying it to eight. Okay, Texas plus eight. All right, got it. All right, Texas plus eight. And that's it. All right. Do you have a feeling? On, so the other one on that podcast was the Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, no, no, no. No feeling there? Okay. All right, so NC State. One minute remaining. Uh, DraftKings has it right now at six and a half, so buy it to seven. And then Texas, it's at seven and a half. We're buying it to eight. So NC State and Texas are yeah. Otter's two plays today. Yep. yep, two dogs in the ESPN game. All right, Otter, where are you tomorrow? Uh, we're at uh, Mike Anderson Seafood on lead to stop at Nicholson for Oyster Night. Very good, man. Well, good luck tonight, Otter. We appreciate it as always. Good luck, Matt. All right, man, we'll see you. That is uh, Jimmy Ott. This is after further review. All right, so Otter's going NC State and Texas. I'm glad he pointed that out because it's an important distinction to note to make sure, like, because it's his picks as opposed to what was on the podcast. But you can go look at Sports Better's Paradise on YouTube. Uh, that's Jimmy's pod that with uh, Bet Rivers that we talked about. So if you want to go check that out, subscribe up. They give picks there all the time as well. So, all right, that's going to do it for us. Muse, Polly, I appreciate it. If you missed anything, AFR On Demand presented by Breck Golf. Book your tee time at golf.breck.org. Golf.breck.org. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow at 3. AFR. As we get on down the road, mind you about Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Windows, doors, siding. Oh, yeah, they do indoor shutters as well, Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. You know, one thing I always love to talk about with Relief Windows is the service. And at Relief Windows, they actually have a service department. You know, one thing I say often is I never talk about price with Relief Windows uh, because they're they're never going to be the cheapest. So if someone's telling you, you know, that they're going to give you a discount or this, like if you're just shopping price and you're going to get bids to find the lowest price, don't call Relief Windows. They'll never be the cheapest. But one thing I would always encourage you to do is if you are shopping around, ask if a company has a lifetime transferable warranty, Relief Windows does, on labor material and glass breakers. Ask if they have a service department, not chucking a truck, but like a full-on service department, Relief Windows does. That's why the experience, quality, and service is always better at Relief Windows. And ReliefWindows.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. There it is. The extra mile. On the border of expected and extraordinary. For those willing to go further. Like vans customized for work or play. With safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks. And you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park miles and miles of trails and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash to explore to run wild and even soar 
You imagined we delivered gold. 